Hello everyone, you are listening to the Blue Milk Scale, a podcast dedicated to the discussion of films past, present, and future. I'm your host, Alex. Uh, it's Connor, I'm returning. And today we've got a very special guest with us from LA. It is the one and only Cole Ryan Brewer. Say hello, Cole. Hello, how's it going? <laughs> Doing well. So, Did you know that your last name probably comes from... All the way down the line, a female brewer, beer brewer. It's a surname that you got. I knew we came from a family of beer, and I've always mm-hmm. decided to uphold that tradition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't Excellent. Know it was female. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Empowering. It is empowering. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah. So, guys, we are at the end of 2017. We've made it through another year of movies, and yeah, there's lots of interesting stuff to talk about with this. Um, Lots of that stuff has happened this year. Um, how did um, 2017 treat you guys? Did you have a good year? Everyone? I had a good year. Pretty had a really good, year, good year, yeah. I had a pretty good year as well. I mean, there's lots of stuff that happened that, like, I've lost respect for many people. And deservedly so. It's just a shame that it took so long. Yeah. It's uh, a huge shame, but we're not here to talk about that. We're, we're here to look past that, thankfully. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're not going to look through it, but we'll look not past it. Not through it. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. different things. So, uh, what we shall do is we shall be discussing all the films we collectively saw. And um, we'll see how it goes. And we'll have, um, as usual, in the description, I'll provide timestamps for the specific movies, if I can speak. Um, so, if you want to hear a specific movie... Go ahead and click on that timestamp. All right, so let's get started. So the very first film that I've got, we've got on this list is Split, the return of M. Night Shyamalan. Uh, who saw this one? I saw it. Yeah, I we saw all saw it. Yes. Oh, uh, what did we think? Uh, I liked it. Um, are we talking spoilers? Oh yeah, yeah, I guess we should throw this out there. As well. Yeah. Sp- full spoilers for a good chunk of these movies. Um. Maybe unnecessary. Maybe not. I enjoyed the entire movie. What did I, you think I, about I the thought, twist? I thought uh, the twist was completely unnecessary. Twist for yeah, the sake this, of a twist? At this point, I'm expecting a twist, so yeah. it's always sure. unnecessary to me. But I thought James McAvoy and uh, Anya Taylor-Joy did wow. fantastically. Yeah. McAvoy in particular was yeah. really, really good. 24 different like personalities. That's, that's impressive for, to say. Um, I don't... F- yeah... Twist though, it's, it's weird. Told, it, the, the thing is, we expect the twist. The problem is, this one was completely unnecessary. They they didn't seem to connect in any way until the last moment. If he had mm. maybe peppered in some other details to, to give us the yeah. hints, but it just was a little incredibly thing. Maybe so that we could uh, we could connect it all at the end. Yeah, and feel like there's a reason that the, the twist exists. Um, yeah. Besides that, the structure of the movie it kept me. Uh, interested throughout the entire thing. Surprisingly were well all amazing. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And I would be inclined to say this is one of um, Shyamalan's best film he's made in... What's the last good film he did? Six Sons. Are we, are we gonna Are we going to count The Happening as so bad it's good? <laughs> I'm... It's the sure. trees, uh, man. What? The trees. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> um... I Definitely guess objectively, and signs is signs. Is, I like signs. I like Joaquin Phoenix a lot, so mm-hmm. I thought he was really good in that. Okay. Um. So split. Pretty good. I, I like, guess I like split. I'd, I'd give it a. I have problems watch. with it, but I don't mm-hmm. yeah. all right. Uh, the next film I, we've got on the list is one you saw, Cole. Yeah. Um, this can be a running theme, by the way. Cole has seen a good majority of these <laughs> films on this list, so. <laughs> You have the floor, sir. What is the next film? Uh, the next film's called Trespass Against Us, and it's a Michael Fassbender and Brendan Gleeson Shakespeare adaptation from A24. That mm-hmm. It was more good than it was bad, but they had a lot of room for improvement when it came to actually mm-hmm. making it. Like they, There were certain story elements that felt forced. Michael Fassbender didn't really seem too comfortable to me with the material. Brendan Gleeson was... Phenomenal, though. He's always great. Him and his son, Domo, are mm. amazing actors. Totally, I agree. Domo Gleeson, he's really jumped up recently, all hasn't he, he? All he does is amazing films. And even the ones that he's in that are bad are still liked by audiences and mm-hmm. they're still fun movies. Especially Frank. He and Michael Fassbender oh. in that movie are Frank is so, so great. 
<laughs> um, Trespass Against Us wasn't really that memorable, honestly. It's if you watch it, you're gonna like it. But if you're, you're if you don't, it's not a big deal. <laughs> cool. It's not one that you need to rush out. Mm-hmm. I got gotcha. you. Um, another film that I don't think the rest of us saw, but you did. Uh, the Red Turtle. I really want to see this one. Uh, it was so good. I'm just blown away because it didn't feel like a Studio Ghibli film, but it did at the same time. It had all the characteristics of the the family fun for Ghibli, but it also was surprisingly touching and realistic and like heartfelt. And there's just so much. This I don't want, I don't want to spoil anything because it is one of those movies that I think. It's just too beautiful. You have, you want to be able to watch it in that moment. Mm-hmm. Cool, especially the animation. The it was mm-hmm. that was the most significant difference from a, another Ghibli movie. And yeah, it, just it looks beautiful. It looks really unique, like something I haven't quite quite seen from them before. Um, <laughs> the next film you've got on the list is um, a Dog's Purpose. Now I will say though, I kind of made fun of this movie like when it was coming out. And for a little while, I took a screenshot of this. For a brief while, it was one of the top ten highest grossing films of the year. I had a, I, I had a screenshot yeah. of this. I'm not making it up. That, that, it was. It was. <laughs> my, a slow day. It wasn't horrible. I thought it wasn't <laughs> a, a terrible movie, but it, it was exactly what you'd expect from that type of film. Sure. Uh, a sappy, feel-good dog movie for a bunch of dog lovers. And I'm a dog lover, too, but... At a certain point, we got to ask ourselves, are we liking it because we love dogs, or are we liking it because it's a good film? Now, I am excited about A Cat's Purpose coming out. Oh, a Cat's totally. Purpose is <laughs> going to be like three hours of just sitting and clawing <laughs> at humans. <Yeah. laughs> and I, I will go and watch it. Who's gonna, who will voice the cat, though? That's the big question. Um, I think we yeah. would have to have Jay Leno or George Clooney voice the cat mm-hmm. and really give a okay. homage to the South Park. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. There we go. <laughs> now, what about the controversy around that movie? How did that affect it? I don't think it it, uh, it affected the the people beforehand, but mm-hmm. overall, it's not really noticeable in the film. And the controversy was bull, bull anyway because it was. Oh, by the way, you can swear if you want oh, to. Okay, cool. It was bullshit. It was <laughs> it was such bullshit. The trainer was taking the dog, carefully dipping him in the water, which the dog noticeably did not like. But he was the trainer was doing it slowly. And he was several times he dipped the, the dog in while still holding the dog, mm-hmm. and then took the dog out so that the dog could get used to the stunt. And what the video that we saw that was released was cut so that it looked bad, but there was yeah. there was nothing bad that happened that's out of the mm-hmm. ordinary for the humane society and for stunt people in, in right. general. It was one of those moments mm-hmm. where people cut a video to get a headline and mm-hmm. ruin a film because they wanted to. Seems like a weird film to try to ruin. It, yeah, yeah come, like it's a. You already know it's not gonna be amazing just by looking at it. Let's be real. Yeah, yeah. I knew what it was. You know. And the, the twist in it for me was the kind of twist was weird too. Like Dennis Quaid was the the kid from the original dog. Oh yeah, regeneration of. The I never dogs. saw the movie. I know it was okay. Mm-hmm. It's, it's nothing compares to Marley and Me though. That is a really good film. That is a great oh. dog movie. Oh, man. You brought oh, back know. the feels. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, next one. Moving on. Yes. Moving swiftly along, we've got Rings. I did not see this. How about you, Connor? I didn't see it. Either. I saw it. Yeah. It's bad. Let's move oh. on. <laughs> right on. Yeah. That's pretty much all you need to know about it. It's bad. Cool. Um, <laughs> the next oh, one. Oh, another movie that I specifically didn't see. It's not yeah. that I didn't get a chance to. All right. The next film I've got, that we've got on the list is... Um, War on Everyone, and once again, Cole, you have the floor, sir. <laughs> um, Good. <laughs> it's 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 average. I thought it was. I, I went and supported it because I like the McDonough brothers. Uh, John Michael McDonough wrote and directed this one. He mm-hmm. did um, a movie called Calvary with Brendan Gleeson. That one's very good. That is very good. And then he also did a movie called The Guard, also with Brendan Gleeson and then Don Cheadle as well. And I thought those were great. War on Everyone. It was noticeably he was trying to please people. And he wasn't just making the film, but it was still fun. Cool. Yeah. Um, the next film, the Lego Batman movie. Now, I did see this one, so I guess I'll go first. Um, for those that don't know, I am a huge fan of the Lego movie. I think it's um, a really clever animated film. Um, like, one of the most clever I've seen in recent memory. 
Um, as for this, I love the first ten minutes because it's so fun. I love how like a um, meta Batman is, and then like it, though, seriously, the first ten minutes is just so fun. I can't stress that enough. But my big problem with the movie is when it actually tries to actually be a movie, like it feels very, it feels very repetitive a lot of times. It's very expository heavy and it's just very tedious at it times. It sounded like you wanted a short. Well, it was well, sure. It actually would have been much better as a short film running. Yeah, maybe as like a movie. like a bonus feature on the Lego Movie or something like, like that. But Coco, Disney's Pixar's new movie, had a twenty three minute long short for Frozen oh, yes. Yes. before it. I that would have been great for a new Lego Movie, a twenty minute long Lego Batman short. I'd watch that. that it's like an episode of the old cartoon. That would be perfect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Totally. Um, did any of you guys see that um, Lego Batman movie? I did. I thought it was it was fun. I liked it more than the Lego Movie, but I I despise the Lego Movie just because I I haven't given her a rewatch because I felt so cheated out with the Toy Story feeling ending. So I, sure. I should give it a rewatch and like give it another try. But mm. just from what I can remember, I felt cheated is the the only word I can use to describe. I, I uh, and yeah. guess what. Everything is awesome. Ah, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be. Stuck I'm sorry, in everyone. I'm sorry, year. everyone. If I got that stuck in your head all of a sudden. All right, <laughs> um, but aside from that, it's well acted. I liked um, Michael Cera as Robin. <laughs> yeah, he's that really Galifianakis fun. was a pretty funny Joker. Yeah, um, it's got its fun moments. It's just yeah, it's more fun than it is a film. I think yeah, it's it's worth. Uh, a watch without you really paying attention. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to to steal uh, a line from a critic that reviewed Bright, it's one of those movies where when you go to the kitchen or go to the bathroom, you yell out to the person watching it with you, no, 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 no. don't pause it. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Now, here comes a film that all of us have seen, and that is John Wick Chapter 2. Damn straight. In oh. a word, badass. I would I mean, love okay. to see the John Wick TV series so much just because Chapter 2 proved to me that they've created a beautiful world in yes, John totally. Wick's world. And I love that it picked up right after, mm. too. Like I usually don't like that. I usually hate it when films do that yeah. and they try and make it all continuous. I agree with but mm-hmm. with John Wick, it makes sense that his rage would last for like a week mm-hmm. and then he'd get over it. Yeah. So we're going to be able to see a trilogy of just badass a badass week that John Wick had because some shit happened yeah. because of stupid Russians. <laughs> it brought some new elements to mm-hmm. it too. The, the, the blood coin. What is it called? Uh, um, wait, what are you talking about? The coin. Yeah. That he had. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah. I, I uh, there's a name for it. Name. And he thought he brought it up. I don't remember. But it, it brings some, it brings some some new plot points to it. Mm-hmm. It continues the old one without. Uh, you don't. You can't get tired of these movies. Mm. You just can't. It's just fun at the yeah. end of the day. It Especially is so because much fun. we've seen Keanu Reeves in less than stellar action movies, and now that he finally has directors, this is his writers role. writing for him. Yeah. He's able to kill the role. Yeah, and he he's actually doing all of the own his, his own gun work. That mm, was totally. what I loved. He's training to be John Wick. Yeah. <laughs> you will be fun. I doubt this would happen for the third movie. They should just call it John Wick 3, but the 3 is Roman numerals. Just take liberty with the titles. Just have fun with it. Yes, that would be awesome. <laughs> I doubt I, I want to shout out the, the, the lighting of John Wick 2. Oh, it yes. was incredible. The lighting in Throughout the entire so thing. Yes. Splash this is a good series so far. Let's keep yeah, it up. Let's keep it up. Excited for the new one. Uh, um, anyways, back to um, your... Um, <laughs> like string of movies you've seen the great wall i did not see this <laughs> the uh yeah that yeah um it wasn't whitewashing i, I do want to make that clear because that was the main concern everybody had it wasn't whitewashing he mm-hmm. was a european character that was hired or brought to the uh the chinese characters for help yeah. but it just was so Oh, unnecessary. And the CG was bad. It was eye gougingly bad. It was really for a movie that's built around mythical creatures attacking the Great Wall. You would think that they would want that to look good, but mm. it just came off as that's just using we gotta the get it out. We gotta get it out irresponsibly. 
Yeah, it's using yeah. the technology irresponsibly. Cool. Next Overall, film. It's just a shame. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, my ne- uh, the next film is um, another film I did not see. A Cure for Wellness. I wanted to see this. Looked interesting. How was it? Disappointing overall. Cool. Yeah, it was. The trailers are much better because they give you more of a creepy feel. Mm-hmm. But I think the thing that's that is great about a cure for wellness is the use of surreal imagery. That, okay. That continually throughout the whole movie was good, but story I didn't really care for. And Dane DeHaan, I think, is his name. Yeah, Dane DeHaan. Yeah. Mm, he is a particular actor that has to work with good directors to be good. I think. I yeah, I can agree with that actually. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll get to another Dane DeHaan movie. Down oh the list. boy! <laughs> <sighs> um, fist fight. Who saw this one? Because I didn't see it. I did. I. I'm actually. I, I unashamedly love this movie. I, I love Charlie Day. I think oh, he's amazing. Me too. Mm-hmm. And Ice Cube and him had a <laughs> hilarious <laughs> chemistry of oh, just hatred. And then you had fun little cameos from Tracy Morgan and Jillian Bell mm. as side players. That it was it was fun. It wasn't anything more than it had to be. They knew what they were making, and that's what helped them. I think. Cool. Uh, the next one we've got on this list is probably, I'd say, the biggest surprise of the year: Get Out. Oh boy! There's just so much to say. It's hard to, yeah. to encapsulate it into words. Well, we, we've all seen it, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, what a surprise this was! Like honestly, I did not expect this to be so so and good. To have such a great message that wasn't belittled by the work too. Like Jordan mm-hmm. Peele made sure that it was a a really harsh reality in the film that but it worked for it it wasn't mm. forced upon you yeah I totally agree with that it's just it's really well made too this is his first film his first feature length film and it's coming from Key and Peele yeah. and other comedic <laughs> things I don't know what Black I expected it. going into it <laughs> I, I, I expected uh, something more along the lines of Shaun of the Dead horror comedy and okay. I, what I think we got was a great Intense. horror film with a little bit of comedic element. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's always a good balance as well. Like, if they can pull that off, that's impressive. Plus, there were serial killer jokes, specifically mm-hmm. about Dahmer, Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah. I always fall for. Wasn't those. this nominated for um, a Golden Globe for best comedy? Yes, it was. Yeah, it's and just like the adding Martian. once again to the bullshit of the Golden Globes. <laughs> the fact that The Martian was nominated for best a comedy. comedy. And one. Did you like The Martian? I thought The Martian was good. I, I love The Martian, um, actually. The things that I didn't like about it were more about the my overall dislike of how the MPAA continues to rate things. Because I thought the Fair surgery enough. scene and the uh, the language in the movie I, I, doesn't bother me. But for a PG-13 film, I hate to see the inconsistency. Because that was a really mm. realistic surgery bit when he's yeah. first getting back in. And then two uses of the word fuck, which are not supposed to be allowed in a PG-13 movie. Yeah, you're, you're right. That is weird. One. It's just, no, I think they moved it to two now. Did they? I believe so. Huh. I, I, it has. It depends on how it's used as well. Because there's like... Um, I know if it's sexual in any way, it is automatically R. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Which makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Maybe there's some flexibility there. I, I, maybe it's not as. as I think it's as just think. who gets to pay for for the words because Bridge of Spies also had more than one use of the f bomb, and mm. it was a Spielberg movie. This mm-hmm. was Ridley Scott. I think yeah. they have they have the power to bend the MPAA to their will. Mm. But that's not get out. <laughs> tangents. And, yep. Oh, by the way, tangents are are there are going to be lots of tangents. By the way, so be prepared for that. It's what happened. It happens in this podcast. It's all good, though. I did love the use of um, recurring motifs in Get Out. So mm-hmm. the deer in the beginning, the um, the idea of um, his mom being in a hit and run, and he can't mm-hmm. do that. That was like seeing his character struggle in that final scene when he hits the grandmother. That was intense. It was very, very well done. I, I loved that. Some of the best performances as well. Yeah. Oh, totally. The uh, the father I forget who uh, what his name is um, 
the yeah, actors. I'm, but I'm trying to remember. He, he does it so well. He mm-hmm. he came off as this really cool, laid back, liberal father, and then he ends up being. This I would have voted for Obama the second term. Exactly. <laughs> And Stephen Root, I wanted to love his character. I wanted him to be one of the only people in the family that was good. But then, of course, he he was once a photographer. He wants to be able to see again. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. I just it left me hating every single yeah. white character in the movie. Honestly, <laughs> which good for good for Jordan Peele. He did that deliberately, mm-hmm. and he succeeded. He doesn't hate white people, though. No. No, oh, no. Just, he made He's... these characters so perfectly hateable. Because uh-huh. that, that's, that's, a, that's one of those uh, really uh, empty criticisms that the movie had was, was that it was uh, coming from white people's throats. No. no if you're was, not a no. shitty white person, it was specific, it's not coming for you. It was specific to the type of character they're supposed to be, and we only see those types mm-hmm. of uh, white characters for mm-hmm. a reason. That. He, he's not trying to show that there are good white people because we know that. He's trying to shed a light on the continuing systemic problem in America. Absolutely. Totally. Now, the next film on this list is one I've never heard of before. It's, um, I don't feel at home in this world anymore. Cole, explain to us what this is. It's so fantastic. I, I just love anything that's kind of dark comedy horror aspect like this. It's mm. very much like, the, uh, like Green Room. From 2015. Green Room's excellent. It's the Blue Ruin. Macon Blair, who directed I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore, actually was in both Green Room and Blue Ruin, both movies by the um, Green Room director. So good. And it it feels like he captured a bit of Green Room and put it into I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore. It stars uh, Elijah Wood and I don't know her name, but she was in Two and a Half Men for a while. She played oh, Charlie's girlfriend. Gross. I think I know who you're on about. Yeah, the creepy stalker of uh, Charlie Sheen. Yeah, cool. It was it was very very well done, and Elijah Wood is <laughs> hilariously creepy. He has a rat uh, tail in the movie. Oh really, Melania yeah. uh, Lensky? Yes. yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, her fact checker snaps for Connor. Thank you, thank you. Couldn't have done it without Google. Mm. This uh, this podcast is sponsored by Google, by the way. <laughs> They're paying. Not a bad sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, next film, Logan. Oh, I love this movie. <laughs> that speaking redefining. Of, speaking of movies that seeing more than once in theaters, I actually went and saw Logan four times in theaters. Same, actually. It was that. It was just that powerful to me. I cried at the end, not the first time. I think I was just so shocked by how well it was, but I. I cry at the end every other sure. time because yeah. it's they do such a great job of building up Hugh Jackman's character's mm-hmm. death and then the little girl um, uh, forget her name but X-23 well, X-23 yeah forget the actress's name she was uh, Daphne King Daphne King is I am so excited to see what else she's gonna do yeah me too sure. need, we need to have an X-23 solo movie she was so good I will agree with that just not too soon. Yeah, can we just, can we just give wait a, a little bit? Just let, a little. let James Mangold make another film, not superhero related, and then he'll come back after Daphne is aged up a little bit, so she can do a well, little bit more. I mean, bear in mind this: um, recently, Disney did buy Fox, so I have no idea what's going to happen with the X Men films. I we really don't know. Don't even know what's going to happen with Deadpool at this point. Disney's saying they want to continue it, but at the same time... I don't know something. how that's, that's going to work. One. I don't yeah, know how that's right. going to work. Like, honestly, like, as convoluted as, like, the X-Men franchise is the, the, with the timeline, how are you going to integrate that, like, seamlessly with the MCU? Mm-hmm. You can't. It's impossible. I, I think the only way they could do it is if they create the X-Men within the MCU. So, like, it's a completely well, different sure. timeline, completely different X, like... Everything else has been I its mean, own thing. And whether now you get MCU like, has and by the way, by the way, by the way, everyone, Disney, if you're listening to this, please, for the love of God, do not get Hugh Jackman back, because this was the perfect finale for his career as Wolverine. I think Why the only would you... way they should bring him back is as a cameo in Avengers, which he said he would do. Just, ex- I want like uh, five seconds, like in First Class, where he tells, uh, like, go fuck yourself. Yeah, Magneto and uh, X- <laughs> Xavier. Um, uh, I don't even want that. That's just me. Like this was his performance should be the last thing we see of his. Char- I mean, if you want to recast Wolverine with like I don't know, like Tom Hardy 
So I make like go make him go on full on Canadian. Like do short Canadian Wolverine. The fans would love that. Tom Hardy would fit the size. He is pretty short, but he's also mm-hmm. muscular. Yeah, he. I think he'd be a cool Wolverine. But no, no. Oh wait, never mind. He can't do that anymore. He's Venom now. Oh, that's true. Oh wow, I forgot about that. Oh yeah, I guess we should mention it as well. We're getting a Venom movie next year, and it's official. It's like ten years in the making, and it's like it's finally happening. It's it's weird. <laughs> um. Anyways, Logan, um, I am a lifelong X Men fan. Like I, the films, it's quite a journey with these movies. Like there's a whole wide range of emotions I have for these movies. Like there's some great films in this franchise. Like X Men Two, X Men Days of Future Past. If I want like a fun schlocky cartoon, I'd watch Apocalypse or Origins Wolverine. I mean, if I want to be dead, I mean, there's some options as well. It's so wonderful. Then you get Logan, which is completely different from everything we've ever gotten before. Logan is up there with one other superhero movie that's done it perfectly, and that's Dark Knight because they they mm-hmm. set out to make. A film, a genre film. Dark Knight is a detective movie. Logan is a, a, a neo western, and they set out to make it with superhero characters, not focusing on the super aspect, and that's why it's so great. Yes. Did either of you get a chance to see it in black and white? I did yes. actually. Yeah. I just like with Perfect. Mad Max, I think they're both great, but mm-hmm. I couldn't choose between them because well, the each fact scene that it has, fits at all. Yeah, they they know. both have scenes that are better in one or the other. Like I think. Mad Max overall, the opening is great in black and white, but once you get onto the road, seeing the, the colors totally. of the sparks are mm. cooler. With Logan, I thought uh, towards the end, the, the black and white was more fitting, but I thought the beginning with the, the desert colors were, mm. was so beautiful. Yeah, totally. And Logan, man, that's just... It's, I'd go as far as it's one of my favorites of the year, for sure. Definitely. I'm definitely going to be rewatching it several times every year. And yeah, like you said, every rewatch because I have the Blu-ray, I have the Target exclusive um, uh, package of it on Blu-ray yeah, where it comes the, with the photo the, the book. Bo- the photo book. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so, so cool, beautiful. It is, and it's like every time I watch that, I need tissues every damn time. It's that good of a it's, movie. That's just a testament to how much passion they put into the filmmaking. Of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like I said, as a lifelong X-Men fan, I was just. Very pleased. Um, anyways, let's swiftly move along to um, an interesting film, Kong Skull Island. Who saw this one? Yes. Yes, I did. Um, what did you think of it? Because you seem positive on it. Uh, I, I was... I'm not a big creature fan. Like, I don't okay. like creature movies in general, but... I did like Kong because it was... It felt like a 70s movie. I liked that. And sure. I, it embraced what it was. With Peter Jackson's King Kong, it was excessively long. That's the longest movie it. on earth. It's just, <laughs> it's just... I think he was trying to do something with it that was way too serious. When even back in the old days, the, the 1930s King Kong yeah. was campy. It was It was silly. Fun. It was, it was fun. silly fun. Yeah, and that's what I think Kong Skull Island brought back to it. Sure. I didn't think it was phenomenal. I wouldn't call it... I probably wouldn't rewatch it too many times. I mm-hmm. wouldn't buy it myself, but I wouldn't be opposed to watching yeah. it with somebody again. I might agree with you on that, actually. Um, I actually kind of like um, the color grading in this film. Yes, the colors were so vivid. Mm-hmm. Skull Island was very, very beautiful. Yeah, good performance. I really liked um, John C. Riley in this movie as well. I thought he was really fun. <laughs> John C. Riley was amazing. He's, and he's with the sword and everything. Just, oh, man, that's just great. One of the best iconic shots of the year. Him with the sword. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's fun. I mean, if I if it was on TV, I'd probably watch it. I did kind of have a nerdy moment with uh, my roommate when we watched it because towards the end credits, right, like right at the end, mm-hmm. uh, they showed the other files that they have on creatures like oh, yeah. they did with the Avengers and before mm-hmm. they made the Avengers. And then but, Samuel, what we didn't see was that Samuel L. Jackson showed up at the end. He's like, again, he, oh yeah, he's in this movie. It can't work. The joke can't work. He's in the movie. God, it's, I'm here to I'm talk just, to you about the Avengers. I'm just excited mission. to see uh, Loch Ness Monster in <laughs> one of these movies. That's going to be yeah. cool. Uh, the next film we've got is uh, Raw. What did you think, Cole? I loved Raw. I 
I love excessively bloody and gory movies. I went, in, especially cannibal movies. I love the Cannibal Holocaust, uh, Cannibal <laughs> Faro. Uh, Italian cannibal movies are awesome. Um, the Green Inferno I went and saw in theaters and laughed as people started walking out. Raw I thought was amazing because it wasn't just shock value. It was a real story. Uh-huh. I think the funniest part for me, though, was before we walked into the theater, I, I saw in um, uh, the, the landmark down in Santa Monica, which is a one theater uh, place. It only has the one auditorium. Mm-hmm. And before you walked in, the uh, the usher was handing out vomit bags because people, oh, for real? people got sick to their stomach. It was that realistically intense. Wow. Uh, the next film, uh, Personal Shopper. I didn't see this. I, I saw it. And Kristen Stewart was... Re- she had acting chops. <laughs> Surprisingly, I it feels weird saying those words, but she was oh, okay. Actually... I'll give her this. Um, I I did like her in um, American Ultra. American Ultra is one of those really silly, awesome movies. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of dug that movie, but anyway, that's all. You're saying she found the right role. Yeah, she's she's starting to understand what roles are working for her. Personal mm. Shopper is another one of those steps of her getting to. A, a, a role that really fits her. Okay. Good for her. All right, the next film, I believe I'm the only one who saw this one. Uh, Beauty and the Beast. I did not, no. Okay. Um, <clears throat> just, just some brief little context here. Um, Beauty and the Beast is one of my favorite um, films, let alone Disney films. Like It's such a really rich story. I really love it. Um, I know you'll disagree, Cole. I know you're not a Disney fan, but... <laughs> I, I, this... I'm not opposed to Disney making films. I personally wasn't a big fan of Beauty and the Beast, mainly because in the cartoon, the prince is like, what, 12, 11 years old? He's yeah. young when he gets turned into a beast. And I thought the whole idea of the prince being punished for something when he's that young, I, I, that was the... It's the a fairy movie. tale at the end of the day. But, uh, yeah. but what the problem with this is that it is quite literally the same exact movie but done in live action which is the reason i didn't want to go watch it like what's the point in paying to see essentially a high definition remaster now i gotta say this if the original did not exist i think this would be a pretty enjoyable film at best because uh, like objectively speaking like the the br guest sequence that's a fun sequence um but it's the exact same choreography as the original. And, like, I mean, they do some things differently, but they don't really benefit the... Like, like there's no justification for remaking it entirely. Like, I, I'm fine with a remake as long as there's a, a good reason as to why you're doing it. But the only reason I can see is that Disney literally spent an estimated $160 million just to remind you that Beauty and the Beast is a thing that exists. And... I dare say this is my least favorite film of the year. I just, I just found this very cynical in Disney's move. Who else can't uh, wait until they're re- being reminded of the Lion King and the oh, Little totally. Mermaid with and James, Jungle Book Two with James Earl Jones coming back for Mufasa? It's the mm-hmm. only good thing I think Disney did with that. <laughs> you cannot <laughs> recast Mufasa. <laughs> sure, but it's like, could we get someone else to money, do it? Money, maybe? money, money. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the money. Um, Belko experiment. Uh, you saw this, Cole. I saw this too, actually. Yeah, I. It's fun. It's it's yeah. a violent, bloody fun ride. Uh, I love seeing anything that's from the Gun Brothers. I love them. Slither mm-hmm. is amazing. Yes. I think Super is also a great <laughs> movie with Rain Wilson and uh, Ellen, Ellen Page. Mm-hmm. But uh, Belko Experiment was, it was bloody. There were some satisfying deaths in it. <laughs> Overall, I, I, the, for you, the ending, for you, <laughs> the ending was what got me the most because mm-hmm. it, it, w- it wasn't expected. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another film that both of us saw, uh, T2 Train Spotting, the long awaited sequel to Train Spotting from 1996. Train Spotting is one of my favorite movies of all time. Mm. So I don't think I could have hated T2, even if it was bad, <laughs> just because I love the first one so much. But the fact that T2 was actually a nice continuation of Train Spotting, that was, that was pleasantly unexpected. 
What's interesting for me is that I didn't see Train Spotting until this year, actually. Like I was, in, I was introduced to it this year, and I really dug it. And this is actually, I feel like this is quite on par with them. Um, the first one, I feel. The, the main complaint I heard from a lot of people was they wanted to see uh, another heroin movie, and I was like, no, we we got a good heroin movie with Train Spotting, and now they're moving on to other things. Yeah, they're moving on to other substances that they would do in their later life. And it's really compelling they're as well. They're growing. I know they're growing. They stopped. They they took the needle out, and now they're just going with cocaine. That's that's it's like oh, that's that growth. Like Fast paced movie. <laughs> it's like I mean I don't want to, I don't mean to jump into this early, but it's like people complaining about Luke Skywalker in the Last Jedi. Like oh we'll he's get not to that. The, we'll get, we'll get we'll, to trust. That. We'll get into that. It's like oh he's not the same character that he was thirty years ago. He's like well people change in real life, so realistically. It, it just makes sense for people to change over time. Yeah, it's what what people were complaining about was what they would complain about if it wasn't there. Character growth. Mm-hmm. You want it in a film, and then you don't want it in a film. You need to make up your freaking mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but T two, great film. I highly recommend it. I thought the cinematography was really great. Oh, I agree. I think um, if I'm correct, he used Anthony Dodd Mantle again. I who, um, want to say he did. He did um, Slumdog Millionaire and a bunch of other great Danny. Oh Boyle man, movies. our researcher's not here right now. We have to Google this right now. All right, I'm on it right now. I'm on it. I'm substituting for our researcher. All right, uh, what's his? What'd you say his name was? Anthony Dodd Mantle. You sir are correct. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Glad I have that memory. Once again, sponsored by Google. <laughs> Um, the next one on the list is um, Song to Song. I did not see this. It's um, it's Terrence Malick. It mm-hmm. was once again, it was like a Knight of Cups, if you've heard of that one. I did not hear that one. Knight of Cups was one that he did in like 2014, 2015 that was, mm-hmm. it was alright. It was totally improvised, okay. apparently. Same with Song to Song. I think both of them, I... Didn't hate that I watched them, yeah. But they're not rewatchable. They they're they're experiments and they're nice, but there there could have been some actual story that he added to it. He could have written something for it. Sure. Um, Devil's Candy. I didn't see this one either. Uh, I've heard of a lot of these actually. Sean Byrne directed this one. He did a um a movie a while ago called The Loved Ones. Where, I have heard of this one. Yeah, where a uh, a, a Australian girl kidnaps a a guy from her high school so she can have her own personal prom at home Mm -hmm. and they torture him and it's the same kind of thing with uh, Devil's Candy the excessively violent funness cool I dig it Um, I think I'm the only one who saw this one it's um, Power Rangers so it's I will say this I was never really that big of a Power Rangers fan growing up. I mean, I I would I remember watching it every now and then, but I was never like a huge fan. Like, oh, this is my childhood. I wasn't that kid. I wasn't that guy. But like, um, the thing with Power Rangers is that honestly, I thought it was working just fine as its own thing for a good chunk of the film. Like, it was on its way for a solid like probably seven out of ten, I'd say, if I'm being generous. I was curious about this movie, but. I had no reason to see it. Sure. I was definitely curious, though. But then, when it gets to the action finale, it then becomes, oh, it's the classic Power Rangers that we all know. Like, it brings back the theme song and everything, and then, don't even get me started with Krispy Kreme in this movie. It's so bizarre. I, I think... So, okay, so here's the thing. So... Before going into this film, uh, Krispy Kreme was um, having, like, Power Rangers donuts. Right. And I was like, why Why is this <laughs> happening? As it turns out, a Krispy Kreme restaurant plays a vital part of the story. <laughs> Naturally, because it's not a blockbuster movie without sponsorships. Mm-hmm. Just <laughs> like how this podcast is, spon- is not, it's just sponsored by Google, you know? And a public spring water. Google. Who are you kidding yourself? Don't go to Yahoo. And Groflex. <laughs> We're out of business. <laughs> I think the reason I didn't go to see Power Rangers, because I was interested, mm-hmm. I I was naive enough to think that the live-action Turtles movie would have been good, and uh, that was... 
Mm, Jokes on wrong. me. <laughs> I'll briefly say this with the live action, the, the, the Michael Bay Turtles, even though he didn't direct it. Um, first one's trash. Second one's fun. It's really dumb. Megan Fox is terrible in that film. Like, it's a whole level, another level of bad for her. But it was fun. As if she couldn't get worse. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Um, next we've got um, Life. The alleged, like, Venom prequel. But not really. <laughs> yeah, it was... It kind of felt like Venom. I was disappointed because they killed off Ryan Reynolds about 30 minutes into the movie. I didn't know that happened. <laughs> yeah, he he wasn't a big part of it, which, eh. Okay. It's whatever. I, I wasn't sad that I watched it, but again, it was one of those movies that was like, mm. you don't have to watch it. Sure. I didn't feel that compelled to watch it. By the way, I skipped a lot of movies this year. The epidemic of passable movies, as nerd writer, <laughs> I think. Mm. Uh, pinned it. I, I yeah. completely agree. Movies that are just okay are, are ruining watching movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. Like this year, yeah, I skipped. I did not see the new Transformers movie. I didn't see the new Pirates of the Caribbean movie. I, I skipped a whole bunch of movies. But, anyways, uh, the next film is a uh, Wilson! <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't see this. I didn't know this. What is this? This is. It's based off of a graphic novel. Um, okay. Woody Harrelson is the lead. Ah, perfect. And he goes and finds his uh, long-lost daughter. It's cool. A, it's a dark comedy. It was... The comic book's a lot better. The graphic novel sure. is much better, but Woody Harrelson is such a, a likable person on the screen that I, I enjoyed it. Cool. And that's what it's all about, right? Entertainment. <laughs> it's entertainment, guys. Um, Ghost in the Shell. Who saw this one? Ah, uh, sadly, I'm gonna have to say I did. I did too. Um, right, quick question, Cole. Did you ever see the original anime? I've seen almost all of the original movies. I think not before I watched it. I only I'd only mm-hmm. seen the the first movie before I watched Ghost in the Shell, and then yeah. my hate for the Ghost in the Shell remake was so visceral that I was like. Shit! I have to go out and buy all the animes and watch them mm. just because they were that much better, and they were. They totally. W- the problem I thought with uh, the remake was the Ghost in the Shell world that they created in the live action didn't feel lived in. It felt like it was just rendered for us. Yeah. Whereas in the the anime movies, they it, it's a real world that all these characters are living in. You can hear the activity and the mm-hmm. sound design. They really put the effort in. And with Scarlett Johansson, I think they were just worried about making money overseas no. and uh, CG. Whitewashing. What did you think of that, by the way? Because this is technically as a Japanese a, character. Three white yeah. dudes. As, <laughs> <laughs> what do we have to say? <laughs> I think the whitewashing was ridiculous in this. Like, they mm-hmm. should have cast. Now, this is whitewashing people. Oh, oh. Yeah, this is serious whitewashing. That was, it was so ridiculously bad. It wasn't even justified in the movie it was just it was scarlett johansson's character yeah i just wonder how scarlett johansson among everybody else was okay with this because she's at the forefront of it it's okay for a director to be Mm -hmm. like well that's not my job it's okay for even a casting director to be like that's not really my job with um hellboy yeah he dropped Mm -hmm. out once he found out that he was whitewashing the character amazing that's the way to do it amazing Mm -hmm. now i will say though i think what i've heard is uh with scarlett johansson uh, as we all know, there's been all sorts of allegations being released for a good number of people. But one of the things that actually did come out with um, Scarlett Johansson was a positive um, thing where apparently um, she created like an after party for the crew. Like she paid for it and everything. That's what I've heard. I don't know if it's I do love hearing true. things like that with the actors it was like, giving yeah. back to the crew. Because they good understand job. that there's nothing that could be done without the crew. Um, right before uh, one of my buddies was was main uh, camera op on uh, I Tanya. Oh, I yeah, see and that he got one. to shoot the entire thing uh, on film too. Uh, mm-hmm. He ended up being really close to Margot Robbie and her husband, and they threw a huge party uh, for the entire crew. And uh, he said that it was just it was just a lot of fun, and, and Margot Robbie and, and her husband were extremely nice. I wish I could remember husband's name but I can't mm. uh, yeah it is really cool when stuff like that happens and, 
because yeah. you're 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 friends with your crew. They're the ones that are making it happen. Not only your director, you the people work that with you deal with for two plus months and not get especially to camera off. operating because you're going to be in very close proximity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always cool to hear that. Yeah. So. Um, next film I've got is um, the Boss Baby. I didn't get to see it. I kind of wanted to see it because I really want to see it. Is it on Netflix? <laughs> yeah, it is. Okay, actually. because I have all of my friends that have seen it that went like high or something or otherwise impaired on substances of course not high because marijuana is illegal but they said that it was extremely enjoyable it was mm. a lot of fun I, the main thing that I loved was Alec Baldwin continued yes. to reference Glengarry Glen Ross <laughs> which was just cookies are for closers exactly. seeing a baby quote that movie is hilarious <laughs> so that's that's part of it that makes it enjoyable not for it is, is it a kids movie trailers. really is it really a kids movie it's it's a it's a DreamWorks kids movie so, so like parents will enjoy it too yeah they, they have enough in jokes yeah. there that only the adults will get but <laughs> DreamWorks, I thought, did very good with their fun movies this year. Unlike Disney, DreamWorks understands that making animated movies isn't necessarily about breaking limits or the box office or even trying to, to make a, a, a piece of art. They understand that their animated movies are just fun, and I thought that one was fun, and Storks was also, I thought. I didn't fun. see Storks. That came out last year, I think, but I'm pretty sure. Did it? I think it did, yeah. Yeah, you were right. I, I saw it for the first time this year. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, Bit Boss Baby looked really funny from the trailers, and I kind of wanted to see it, so maybe I'll get a chance to see it soon. Um, the first one was 2016. Sweet. Thank that was you. right. Um, next film is uh, The Discovery. Uh, what is this, Cole? Uh, Netflix original starring Jason Siegel. The Discovery is... The Within the, the movie, the discovery is the fact that there is actually an afterlife. Oh. And so people start killing themselves in record numbers to get to the afterlife. And it's becoming more of a... Uh, it's an interesting outlook. It's a, it's a frowned upon thing to keep your life and to continue mm -hmm. to live. It, it was an That's interesting, interesting. It was an interesting social satire. Uh, overall, I thought it was only okay, not as great as it could have been. Sure. I, I think check Robert it out Redford then. was also in there, and he was... Oh, okay. Let me double-check that one, though, because I don't want to say he was in it and have people go, yeah, I'm going to watch it for Robert Redford. <laughs> <laughs> oh, totally. Robert Redford all the way. He is an amazing actor. He is. He is. He is in it. Oh, cool. Awesome sauce. As is Rooney Mara and Ooh, nice. uh, Jesse Plemons, both of which I think are very good up-and-coming mm -hmm. actors. Jesse I Clemens agree. proved his acting chops to me on uh, Breaking Bad and Fargo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. Uh, before we move on, I want to ask, uh, I forgot to ask before, did y'all put Stranger Things Season 2 on here? Stranger Things? Uh, I did not. I didn't include TV shows. Okay. Um, but I have not seen a single episode of Stranger Things. Oh, really? <laughs> it's really good. It's good. I really enjoy it. Cause, um, I'll say with Stranger Things real quick, is um, I'm a huge sucker for like 80s anything 80s really yeah. like I love the 80s like I love 80s movies 80s music all that good stuff and um, I'm wearing a rush shirt for crying out loud um, but <laughs> I feel left out we've got uh, the Who shirt here and, yeah. and a rush shirt <laughs> and I'm wearing a Falcon shirt um, <laughs> uh, but like okay. this is just it It just feels so really the 80s tone is perfect for Stranger Things. It, mm -hmm. It's really well done. I thought, cool, you would have you would have saw it because it's shot over here and, and, and stuff like that. I've got I, a bunch of friends that worked on it, and I've got a friend that was a couple friends that were on my list as well. now because... Yeah. I think you'll enjoy it. The second season, I, I heard spoilers um, for it. Have you both seen it? Yeah. The second season? Yeah. I heard that it's a hive mind thing. Kind it of. Is. And I love hive minds. Anything that's related to a hive mind uh, mm -hmm. idea in sci-fi, I, I just love. It's so, a lot different than the first season. Uh, it is different. Equally is, is enjoyable, but... In there is one way. episode in quite dig with um, about that episode. season two. Yeah. 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 But, but overall, yeah. It's really uh, cool. I, I, I enjoyed season one more because it was new and fresh and, mm -hmm. and it had this, this grand yeah. idea. Plus more practical effects in the first one, which is just like the the like prop guy inside sure. of me but I always love seeing practical effects rather than the Demogorgon was Demogorgon practical stuff. man and it's amazing and we wait was it? yes really? in, the, in the in the first season yeah. I thought that was CGI no 
Of course, they do they do CGI overlaying, but, but sure, just like they did with the Porgs and Last Jedi. Oh boy, yeah. Um. <laughs> I like every 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 little bit. We'll just mention Star Wars because that's what's it, coming. It's, it's coming. The most it's coming. Animated movie to talk about. Yeah, I mean we're surrounded. I've got I've got the the Graflex saber here, a full sized R two D two that's looking a little rough, and uh, a stormtrooper helmet over here signed by a nice prop guy from it. Luke Skywalker, Return of the Jedi, green ambient lighting. Exactly. Going on. Oh man, yeah. you guys can't see it, but trust us, it's amazing. We're in amazing surroundings right now. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Star Wars is alright, I guess. Yeah. Uh, the next film is uh, Colossal. I've heard this is very good. Um, did yeah, you, it, was a, was it? it was a weird little film. Oh, yeah? But I loved it. Yeah, it was. Okay. It was, I didn't. I'm not usually a, a Hathaway fan, but I actually loved her performance. I thought she was okay. really stand out from everything else she's done. I love hearing that from people that I'm not a big fan of mm-hmm. Blank, but. They were awesome and whatever. Mm. That's that's always a nice thing to hear because it means that they're surpassing your expectations and and actually making something I, out of it. I'm I'm always open to liking an actor. Like I I want to like every single actor. So when yeah. they do have these yeah. movies, I think that's just that much better. Mm. Um, next film is uh the Fate of the Furious. Um, who saw this one? I did. Negatory. All right, two against one. Um, I'll say this. I've said this before with um, the 2015 um, podcast for these movies. Um, the Fast and the Furious movies are dumb. They're really dumb, but I love them for that. They're fun. And this is just... It's fun. This one's fun. It's. I mean, I, I mean I'm a huge Rock fan. He was fun. Mm-hmm. It, it was just if fun. If it was halfway grounded in reality, these movies would suck. Mm. Well, I, I, the new movies. Sure. Let me be clear, because the last ones were very grounded in reality, and they're great for their own reasons. Mm-hmm. But these new ones, if if they if they still tried to stay tethered to uh, actual real world physics, I I don't think I don't I'd think ever the movie would them. even exist. It, no. wouldn't, it wouldn't exist. No. <laughs> and there's I, like I have seen one scene from a Fast and Furious movie, and it's okay, the maybe? seventh one when oh. the uh, they're dropping the the cars out of the oh, plane. Oh like, yeah. The the movie. It's just all so it's, cool, and it makes you laugh when you watch it. Yeah, I was laughing. Exactly I was impressed by what they did. Mm-hmm. And I was laughing, but I was at the same time I was going, "Wasn't this supposed to be about yeah. racing at one point?" <laughs> and then it, it like, used to be like Tyrese. They, there's just there's so much comic relief in it that it makes fun of itself. Yeah. It's exactly what you want. Like like I call the Han Solo character. Mm. To be able to make fun of your own movie is is, cool. is a power that you know. Yeah. Uh, awesome. The next film we've got is um I believe both you and I uh, Cole we saw this film uh, Free Fire. Yes. This is so cool. I I loved the idea of just a ninety minute movie that was essentially one scene, mm-hmm. and it, he did it very well. I thought it was a lot of fun. Charles or Copley is always amazing to mm-hmm. see because he he didn't want to be an actor. His friend, um, the director for District Nine, Neil Blomkamp, yeah, talked him into starring in District Nine, and since then he's just got more and more roles. And I think he is really good. I love him in the A Team, even though that movie is mm-hmm. only all right. And I love him in Hardcore Henry. Even yeah, I did too. On the eyes, I was I crazy too. about that movie. I, I didn't care was, for it. It was okay. It, it was, was it was experience. a gimmick that lasted two hours. I, I appreciate the movie for what it was, but there's very few movies that I say that I legitimately didn't enjoy, mm-hmm. and that's one of them to be honest. Uh, okay, it was cool for fair. it was cool for a little bit, but I got nothing out of the movie. That the I shorts were a lot better. Yeah, like the promo exactly. shorts they did mm-hmm. for it. Sure, um, but yeah, he's very good in this film, as is um, Killian Murphy. Yes, standout man always. And that dude. this is actually one of my favorite films of the year, actually. And, and not a lot of people saw this one, actually. Didn't they, I think it made back its um, budget, but I don't think it made like big money or anything like that. Like Star Wars? Just <laughs> oh, no, Star Wars didn't make that much money. <laughs> well, Obligatory Star Wars yeah. mention. Comparatively, <laughs> it's kind of rough. Um, sure, sure. But, that, but that's the joke that Star Wars mm. went into the red. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Did I mention Star Wars? <laughs> I don't know, man. I feel like I just have to talk every couple of minutes. <laughs> I haven't okay. seen as many movies. Uh, next film is uh, it's sort of the um, diet Star Wars, I guess. It's um, 
Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Diet Star Wars is very accurate, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I quite enjoyed this one, actually. I liked it because it was uh, like the first one. It was it was fun. It had its uh, great use of comedy. Mm-hmm. It just saddens me, though, to see Chris Pratt continually getting these roles because at some point we're going to get tired of seeing his goofy character see, from Parks and Rec over and over and over again. I think he's trying to transform into something else. I, I think that, I think really Guardians hard. was the transition film for him where he really got into shape and got into like um, the, these action roles. The problem is, is that he's also still holding on to that Parks and Rec side of him. I loved him in Zero Dark Thirty. I did too. I thought he was fantastic. He's actually more versatile than I think uh, People any of us can even give He's him very good at her as well. Point. Yeah. It's just funny because uh, is it the first time you saw him in Parks and Rec? Because that's interesting, though, like how far he's come from there. Yeah. It shows you that a hardworking actor, yeah, even, and even if you've made it on a good TV show, that even if you keep working... I even commend him for like the... Um, how much um, weight he lost to get in the shape, like, good for him. Yeah, like Mark Hamill. I think Mm. I've only seen him in... (laughs) God damn it, Connor. (laughs) Uh, I think I've only seen Chris... The first thing I saw Chris Pratt in was Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. And then I watched Parks and Rec, like, not even two years ago for the first time. Right. Um... I, my main problem with Guardians 2, and this is something that um, is a common criticism among people, is that the there aren't too many character arcs. There's a few. I would I would meet you ha- about halfway there with that. Like, for example, Rocket goes through the same exact arc he, he went through in the first film. Which, can we even call it an arc? It's almost like Rocket doesn't change at all. He's kind of the same, yeah. the same sarcastic, asshole, lovable guy. Mm-hmm. Which is fine, but at the same time, you you should be trying to give yeah. him something more. But the big positive I have is um, Kurt Russell in this film. Can, I just want to give a shout out to the hair and makeup team for making his hair continually look so great. Props just, to you guys. Props to you, seriously. Good job. <laughs> uh, did you hear about what happened with uh, Bright... About the sixty makeup artists were left off the credits. Up. Really? It was yeah. Up, and yeah. They, the the company that did the the makeup made a statement that was so nice to Netflix, saying it was probably a mistake, easily fixed. But until it does get fixed, here's the credits. And I'm thinking, how is this? This isn't a, this isn't something that happens often. No. This, this should not happen. You should. Well, it's have not like all it, it's people. not like it was on a. Uh, I don't know. It, it, the makeup played a big part in that from what I understand the makeup is present in almost every single okay, scene okay see I, ha- I haven't seen it but that's that's what that's Joel what Egerton is the, uh, the co-star uh, with sure. oh, Will yeah. Smith and he's in full orc makeup the entire gotcha. time cool and it's a 90 million dollar movie you you cannot yeah. fuck up something like that a couple of names mm-hmm. Those yeah. people, I mean, those people were excited to see their names in, in something like that. Yeah. That's, and for that's 60 the of them to have to so explain to their family and friends, yeah, oh, no, yeah we got Netflix made out. a mistake. Yeah. Mm. That's got to be a It's huge, streaming, huge though, right? Yeah. So is it that hard to fix? Exactly. It's not that hard to fix. I don't think it's been Just... fixed yet. I haven't heard any uh, thing yeah. that it has been fixed, so I'm assuming it hasn't. Huh. <sighs> Just, um, just a shame. I'm trying to think if I have anything else to say with Guardians 2. Oh, I also got to say, the soundtrack, I think, is better than the first film. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge George Harrison and uh, Cat mm-hmm. Stevens fan, so yeah. having them on there was great. I really love them. I actually really dug um, the ending. I think the ending is quite emotional for a Marvel movie. I don't think movie. I'll ever look at Mary Poppins the same way. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all! Like in Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh. totally. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, um, I guess that's all I have to say about Guardians. I really enjoyed it. It was, yeah, it was fun. It was just like the first one, I thought. Uh, mm. Good, I'd rewatch it, but it's not stellar. Yeah, to me, I think of the three uh, Marvel movies we got this year, um, this, Spider-Man, and Thor, I think this is my personal favorite of the three. Um, with Thor being a second. I, Thor was my favorite. I love Taika Waititi's direction that he took. We'll get to we'll that. We'll get to that. Yes. I've got some things to say to that. Anyways, um, next film. King Arthur, Legend of the Sword. I didn't see this. I saw it. Um, uh, it's fun enough. 
with okay. Jude Law and Charlie Hunnam uh, as as the, the the main people. It, the the problem really isn't studio interference. I think I think Guy Ritchie decided to make a PG thirteen King Arthur movie again, which didn't go well in two thousand four. They had a director's cut that was much better, that was a lot gorier. You have to take an R-rated look at King Arthur mm-hmm. now because it's just we've had too many childish stories about him. We need to see a badass King Arthur with some blood severing people up. Mm. And they they made it like magic y kind of things and okay. the whole playing card motif continued to go in. Like it felt like a deck of cards to me, ready to fall at any moment. Nice. <laughs> um, the next film on the list is um, The Wall what's this movie uh, if I remember correctly Aaron Taylor Johnson is one of the leads and it's essentially uh, a really minimal movie a war movie where it takes place okay. with two soldiers sitting behind a wall during a shootout huh. it was it was a good experiment I, I liked it I'd have to give it a rewatch I only saw it the one time but okay. it was it left me thinking wow that worked. That was good. So mm. overall, I thought positive of it. Very cool. Now we move on to um, not so positive, Alien Covenant. <sighs> um, all right, here's the thing. Um, I don't know if I've said this on any podcast before, but I'm really not a Prometheus fan at all. Like, I think it's a gorgeous looking movie, but my problem with Prometheus is whenever someone speaks. Or does anything, because every character in that film is a dumbass, and they all deserve to die. And Alien Covenant, that's dialed up to an 11. <laughs> and the big thing for me is that, the thing with, I mean, yeah, people complain about Prometheus for not having the alien. But now that the alien is in this movie, it's, unfortunately for, on my end, it's just the same, we've seen it all before from the previous films. And nothing really felt that unique. Mm-hmm. Um, I I will praise Michael Fassbender. I thought he was really good. But was the double performance necessary? Why is it yeah. such a big thing now for for actors to have to do two roles? And then there was the um, unintentionally like gayest scene ever. What was weird? Just not not. The, I'll do the blowing. Yeah the the whole Michael Fassbender kissing Michael Fassbender was. Very unnecessary. I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah, it's really it's... funny for me. Now, can, can you do like, can you speak on um, on the props from that movie? Because that's the only thing that made me want to watch it. I mean, it's got a good, good production value. I yeah. will say that it's a gorgeous. Yeah, that doesn't movie. make a movie, but it, it. I was seeing videos on YouTube of Adam Savage visiting the set and stuff like that, and it seemed like yeah. it was going to be something else, like a real labor of love. Here's the and it might have been from the prop department. But. Here's the weird thing with Ridley Scott is that he knows how to compose a shot. Mm-hmm. He can do a really good job with that. But unfortunately, if he, like, his writing is – it doesn't always land. There's never really that much of a, a human connection to his writing. I heard it somewhere – and I remember agreeing wholeheartedly with it. Ridley Scott is a great filmmaker when it comes to directing a film where the script is really good. Mm-hmm. But if he doesn't have a script that is better than just okay, he's not going to be able to make a great movie. Yeah. I, I completely agree with that, actually. I think the, my main problem with Alien Covenant was it could be boiled down to one scene, which is the first time we actually see the aliens breaking out of the uh, human characters. That mm-hmm. whole scene... That was the only bit that I thought was fun and enjoyable, even though there were multiple stupid character decisions in it. Mm-hmm. I, I did not feel sorry for any of the characters. I thought they were all so stupid. Yes, Except, I agree. I will say Danny McBride was surprisingly good. Okay. I was not expecting him to give a performance like that. I was expecting a stupid Kenny Powers type thing <laughs> from Eastbound and Down, but... Nah, he did, a, he did a good job. Yeah, I mean, all, at the end of the day, this movie did not do anything for me. It just, I felt nothing watching it. Like, I wasn't really that angry towards it. It was just like, why? It just made me feel empty. I guess that's, I guess, a worse feeling than I'm feeling really angry. Sad. I think the, the feeling that I had that you're describing, I, I, I got that, that worse feeling after I read an article saying that Ridley Scott has another four movies planned for the Alien series. 
Or does he? Because this is a Fox movie after all. Oh, ooh, Th- maybe, remember, this is, maybe this is actually something good that came out of the Disney Fox merger. No more alien movies. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> um, Disney can put the, the Fox uh, intro at the beginning of Star Wars movies. All right, like we need a drinking true, game. True, we need to every time you mention Star Wars, we need to take a shot. I mean, they're gonna, they're gonna die. That's what the, they're gonna do. The the main reason I think that Disney bought up Fox was so that they could have the distribution rights to the original Star Wars movies and so. have X Men, yeah. Fantastic Four. Yeah, exactly. It's like yeah. the, there were a few smart decisions in that. Even though I hate that Disney's becoming such, they own. I'm not a fan of this purchase. Office, essentially, if I'm being honest. But, anyways, uh, next um, film we've got is um, Wakefield? Yeah. I've never seen this. What is it? Uh, it's a Brian Cranston movie, actually. He, okay. Um, it's, it's more of a, a character piece of Brian Cranston. Mm-hmm. Essentially, what happens is he has a nervous breakdown and decides to leave his wife and lives in the attic. Okay. He, and it, it, throughout the film, you start seeing that he chose to go up to the attic because he was making a, a choice of his own he wanted the freedom and then towards the end he doesn't feel the freedom anymore he, he starts understanding that the freedom is wherever you feel like you can have it so that's mm-hmm. that's kind of the the message of the movie not to feel like you need to be stuck but to try new things be ready to move on and it was it was a nice thing it was, i thought it was a really good movie very emotional the, the last line of the movie was great because it's just brian cranston mm-hmm. saying so emotionally i'm home just Hearing wow. Brian Cranston say that after watching his nervous breakdown was so awesome. Cool, I'll have to check that out. Um, <laughs> Baywatch. <laughs> I so didn't I, see this. I didn't see it. Uh, I kind of wanted to see it just for just I, a fun time at the movies. I wanted to see it because, if I'm being honest, I was hoping that there was going to be a few Alexandria Daddario scenes of more than just cleavage because she. Uh, mm. As horrible as that sounds, objectifying uh, a great actress, that's the main reason I did go and see it. There, the graphic nudity in the film was all male, which oh, this sounds this sounds weird, but finally, I have hated that there has been such a, a gender gap between nudity and film, where it's acceptable <laughs> to show a woman naked, but seeing a man is is uh, you know. But in Baywatch, they. It was a lot of male nudity for an R-rated film, and I was didn't help the all movie. All the dicks didn't help the movie's story at all. But seeing <laughs> seeing dicks out, I was like, "Yes, finally, dicks out for equality, guys." Let's do yes. This. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I wanted to see it because of The Rock, but The Rock's always likable. I, I did dislike the movie, but The Rock is. He's such a, a, a phenomenal person that I think yeah. he seeps over into his acting. Cool. Um, Wonder Woman. I think we all the, saw that one. Yeah, yeah. we all saw nice. it. Um, I think it's fine. I didn't love it. Um, it's. I'd argue it's definitely probably the best DC film f- from this franchise. Mm-hmm. For the DCEU, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's not saying much. When the rest of your films are garbage. I mean, how can you beat the greatness of Man of Steel or Batman v Superman or, or Suicide Su- Squad? Or Justice League? Uh, I think this uh, this movie uh, catered to everybody's uh, <laughs> uh, desire for just a superhero movie. Besides Gal Gadot being such an amazing actor. Um, She's quite good in this, actually. I did. The, all the performances were fine, but it, it just fulfills what you want in a superhero movie without going over it. I don't it think. does. Um, I think they did a great a job fun. making her look good, but I don't know if she, I, I would say she's a great actor. I, I think Patty Jenkins was such a great director that she was able to make the movie really, really, See, really well. See, here's the thing with um, how I feel about Patty Jenkins. I wasn't particularly impressed with the action in this movie. That's just me. There's um, some cool sequences. There's some cool sequences, but like... I don't know, like the way um, the action was framed, I didn't feel that. I think the main reason I liked the action was because Hans Zimmer and Junkie XL's soundtrack going with it was it was a very it was a very cool riff that they had for the main theme. <laughs> I gotta say, I hated that theme in um, Batman vs Superman, but it was it actually worked kind of well in Wonder Woman. 
yeah, it was. They were just Batman v Superman was just a train wreck. Yeah, but we don't yeah. talk about that movie. Um, <sighs> but I, I, I will I, say with Wonder Woman, um, the third act is what really let it down for me. Like the real view of um, Ares. David Thewlis is such a great actor, but the minute I saw him in the movie, I was like, "That's that's the bad guy. That's mm. that's him. I am the bad guy." He's. I don't want to diss him, but whenever he's in a big movie like this, it's usually the villain, and he's usually not putting all of his effort into mm-hmm. the acting, which. I totally get. I wouldn't really be 100% clocked in if I was making a big DC movie in the past has shown that it wasn't particularly successful, mm-hmm. uh, critically, I mean. But, yeah. Um, yeah, this one, it's fun. People are raving over it, and that's, I mean, if you really enjoyed this film, good for you. Um, you it know, is nice to see that uh, a woman director has made uh, over $100 million at the mm-hmm. box office. That is very nice to see. All these record-breaking things that's can't disrespect that that's always Mm -hmm. nice to to see the movie has really good intentions behind it i just wish it were a better movie i Um, thought the uh the sidekicks were a lot of fun oh i I gotta mention chris pine he's very good in this film um, funny too ewan bremner was also great oh yeah the the uh scott had the nice kilt in battle and everything oh yeah (laughs) um did any of you guys see um, Captain Underpants? I <laughs> wanted to, but I was too ashamed to go to my theater and say one for Captain Underpants. Okay, <laughs> I feel you. Um, uh, see, I was in for Captain Underpants. Sounds a little bit better. Yeah, I, I know. Like, sure. I, at I least actually two. I can pretend that there's somebody down below <laughs> that they can't see. But... I I watch about ninety percent of movies completely by myself. So there's but there's just some that just don't make sense to go see. By sure. Yourself. I went and saw I mean, Hacksaw by myself, Hacksaw oh. Ridge. And that was was that good? It was fine. I I thought a lot of the cinematography choices were a little bit off, especially with um. Hugo Don't you hate when you can notice that? I, when 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 I they was watching Grey Park the other destroyed. day, and the lighting was yeah. so off on uh, back and forth. Yeah. Right. That, yeah. It's just the being in film classes and reading about film and learning about it yeah. makes me notice things even more because now. Because their job is to completely disappear. Yeah. Mm. Your, jo- their, your job, job is, is to, to make sure that no it. one notices you. Mm-hmm. Anyways, Captain Underpants, I saw this movie. Um, you know, I, I read the books as a kid. Um, yeah. Obviously, this brought up a lot of nostalgia to me, and um, it was fun. Now, I what, mean, what exactly was the story? Was it like the first book, or was it? It original? was. A, it was a combination of several of the stories. Um, it was a combination of the first book with his origin, uh, the second book with the talking toilets, awesome, and then the fourth book with Professor Poopy Pants as the yes. main antagonist. Yes, and yeah, that's how it worked. And um, it's funny how I remember all these details with the books. This is filmmaking. Take notes, Tarantino. <laughs> <laughs> we need the main villain and like Tarantino forget your Star Manson Trek movie. movie. Like Professor this is how Manson. it's done. Oh, I forgot he's doing that. I'm actually pretty fucking excited for that. I I really hope. I think it won't count as one of his ten. Movies no, no, it, it won't. It won't. Yeah, I'm, I'm he's done other so projects happy. since too. He has. Yeah, so it's not gonna. He directed parts of the four room, uh, four rooms. That's uh-huh. right. Mm-hmm. He yeah, did. That was anyways, good. he's a busy guy. Yeah. I mean, He's gotta make a living. Yeah. Where does he live? Does he live in LA? He lives in I think he has two houses. I think he lives in uh somewhere in Hollywood and then back in Austin, Texas. Really? Oh okay. he, he started with uh Richard Linklater and Robert Rodriguez. Yeah, Austin yeah, that's right, he did. Huh. Because yeah. he's from Knoxville like me. Mm-hmm. So I that was interesting. Mm. Knoxville's fine, it's not that bad. I, I don't I've never been to Knoxville. I, I, I like I like Knoxville it. fine. It's just it's because <laughs> Knoxville shows up in his in his movies often too. Mm-hmm. What, real quick, what is your guys' favorite Tarantino? Just For me, it. it's Pulp Fiction. I mean, it's it's an easy pick. It's the kind of movie that makes you want to make movies. Reservoir Dogs. That's a close one yeah. for me. Mine's so, uh, Death Proof. Oh, oh that yeah. was so badass. Yeah. Uh, I like that we bo- we all have different ones. It's awesome. Because he has such it's a so wide cool. variety of films within his own little Tarantino mm. genre. It's, yeah. it's so great. I think Jackie Brown's his best one. 
I agree, it's, actually. It doesn't feel like a, a too much like a Tarantino movie. It's the yeah. least Tarantino of them. Mm-hmm. It, it, I mean, this podcast is called The Blue Milk Scale, so I'm allowed to bring it back to Star Wars, right? Okay. <laughs> All right. Sure. It's like, I, I, be, I believe that Empire Strikes Back is the best one, but A New Hope is my favorite. It's the same thing. Sure, yeah. yeah. Exactly, yeah. And that's that's where you can really dissect and, and uh that's where you really understand have the respect movies for the for filmmaker yourself. when yeah. you can mm-hmm. say I like this one but I understand that this one is just so much exactly you know what I find amazing me. how we got to talk about Tarantino from Captain Underpants <laughs> <laughs> this good job a, guys this is a podcast that's what you do <laughs> bring it back and I brought anyway. it to Star Wars too <laughs> Captain Underpants. Captain Underpants. It was fun. Moving Thank you, on. Captain Underpants. Yeah. Um, it comes at night. Who saw this one? Because I, I didn't see it. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> How was it? Um, I thought it was great. Uh, it was. If you didn't like The Witch, you won't like It Comes at Night. It's not. If you didn't like The Witch. Yeah. If if you if you thought The um, Witch was bad, you'll think It Comes at Night is bad too. Well, now, it's now, a, now I definitely want to see. It it's comes a at slow night. building horror movie it's an yes. art it, it is a real film and it's not really too scary like the witch isn't scary it's more of a psychological thing yeah it I, I actually think that the witch is probably one of the scariest movies I think it's scary because, because it, 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 towards it drags the you yeah. in mm-hmm. and, it, and it puts you in that family's place and you can you can see well you can't see this that's the point something like going from the other side of this family and completely tearing them apart that way usually if a film gets to me like gets under my skin i start to laugh in the theater and when the, uh, the, yeah, yeah exactly when the kid coughed up the apple i was dying laughing because i was terrified yeah. mm-hmm. it oh was so it's, it's, it's yeah it's just uh, robert eggers is, i can't wait to see his, his i'm next so prospects. excited for nosferatu to yeah. make Ooh. Yeah. that's gonna be great yeah. um here's oh, yeah, one movie i did skip um Transformers: The Last Night. You saw this one, Cole. What did you think? Yes, I did, and I I actually very much enjoyed it because it was <laughs> so bad. Especially Anthony Hopkins trying to be a young hip guy towards Mark uh, Wahlberg. It was just hilarious. Seems like an undercover cop. Yeah. He, he did not. Fam, what's it? How's it? Yeah. How's it hanging? Better Brad? believe it, dude. Dude, that's rough. Uh, I have seen that bad. clip. Though. I have seen that clip. That is an amazing performance by Anthony Hopkins because you could tell he did not give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, the Beguild. Who saw this one? Yes, sir. How about you, Connor? No? It's a negative? No. Okay. Well, I really enjoyed The Beguild. Um, it's one of my favorites of the year, actually. It's... um. Cause I, I, re- I recently made a top ten list. It's, a, it's an honorable mention for me, but still... It's, Fantastic film. It was it was very very good. I thought I love Colin Farrell, so I thought mm. he was great. Nicole Kidman was also fantastic. Yep. I just I I'm one of the people that loves Sofia Coppola. I mm. I unashamedly love her, except for the ones that she has messed up on. And I sure I, I I'll talk about it, but it doesn't make me dislike her. It shows that she's doing things, she's trying, and she's not afraid to fail. Hmm. Yeah, and um, I really dug it. It's um, I actually kind of find it a little funny at times, which I didn't expect. Yeah, um, and I quite liked it for that as well. Like and like you said, the performances throughout the film, spot on. Really enjoyed it. Um, here's one I didn't see: uh, The Big Sick. Yeah, I saw that one, and uh, I, I liked it. I'm a Zoe Kazan fan. Okay. I think she's really great. I loved her in the the movie. I'm not a big fan of the uh, the writing of the movie. I thought it was okay. a lot of people are saying it's fantastic. I thought it was good, but I think people are pushing it past what it was. I think they're it's overrated at this point. Mm. And I don't mean that in a in a in a harsh way. Overrated is always carries the negative connotation with it, but I, I, it was good. It was just people are hyping it up way too much. I got you, and I know that I know that feeling all too well. Um, the uh, the Bad Batch, yes, I didn't see this one. 
Uh, it is the sophomore effort from the director who did A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night. Oh, yeah. Is the title of that one. I watched it for Jim Carrey and Jim Carrey alone. He has about <laughs> seven minutes in the movie as a bearded, homeless person with a shopping cart wandering the desert. Mm-hmm. And I was not disappointed by his his performance. Jason Momoa gave a pretty good performance. He played a Cuban actor, got the Cuban accent down pretty pretty solid. Nice. Overall, um, disappointing. Keanu Reeves's character was kind of half there, half not there. I was dipping in and out of the movie because it didn't really keep my attention. But overall, I'm glad I watched it. Cool. Baby Driver. Um, I would have such great things to say about this movie had it not been for one asshole ruining me being able to rewatch it. Edgar Wright. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, yeah, the movie was that good. asshole made too good. good of a movie. Yeah. Oh, um, man. And and we should Fuck mention his editing. Too, it's oh, it's uh, on site stuff. Yeah, but and we should also mention that this was filmed 30 minutes from here. Uh, and, yeah, and it's mapped up. I, Perfectly, all the car chase scenes. I was down. Been to the coffee they, shop. Uh, we're so filming cool. some of the scenes. I got to see John mm. Hand oh. outside. Yeah. Wow. I could point out where each location is in um, each shot. Like even like the record store yeah. that he goes to. Yeah. I know. Was, I've been to that store. That was yeah. the main reason I actually went and saw it opening night because uh-huh. being an Atlanta person living in LA, I wanted to see my town again and I wanted mm. to see it in film. And I, he did such a great job capturing mm. Atlanta. My buddy saw uh, the, the, the STI that they used, or the WX, the, you know, the red car, yeah. the rally car. Uh, he saw he saw that car the other day. It was being held at, at a, a, some kind of warehouse where they oh, cool. expensive cars. But, yeah, it was really good. Two thumbs up. Um, mm. You know, there's one asshole that ruined it, of course. See, here's the thing. I, with, I'm uh, still going to rewatch this movie, but, but if it's we're just talking take about the movie by itself, here's, it's awesome. Here's my two cents on um, Kevin Spacey, is that what he did was... It's not cool. I don't. I, I can't forgive him at all. But that being said, I can separate a performance from a person, and he was. Kevin when Spacey's it's not good. As, in when it's point. not as intimate as stand-up comedy is. Sure. Saying. Yeah, but that, like, that's a lot more intimate. You know, he's he's personifying a, a certain character that yeah. someone else. I get where you guys are coming easier. from completely, and yeah. I don't blame you at all. But I, I agree with you. I, I can separate the uh, the character and the the person, but. Right now, it's just still too. But he's gonna give it a couple right. months. Yeah, sure. it's too. It's I, I might have to wait until like March or, or mm-hmm. April of 2018 before. I, I will say it's on watch. sale. Yeah, actually, um, I'm around, not opposed to buying it and just holding on to it for a while. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> on um, Black Friday, um, it was on sale for like seven bucks at Best Buy. On Blu-ray. On Blu-ray. Jeez. Damn, Best Buy. That sucks for <laughs> for the people that should be making money. Yeah, it doesn't suck. I mean, I got it from there because it's like. It's that's cheap. I buy most of my movies from Best Buy. Mm. They have Best Buy just has great. Deals. Also, yeah. also, this podcast is sponsored by Best Buy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways. we're just not getting paid. That's that's the difference. Anyways, we're sponsoring it, but not. Getting we have paid. high things to talk about uh, with both Google and Best Buy. So please mm-hmm. give us money. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. I, w- I need my student loans paid. Please. Anyways, um, that's real. <laughs> um, <laughs> You lucky bastard. <laughs> I'm in real estate school. Mm-hmm. It's definitely a different thing. Yeah. Anyways, a baby driver. Um, baby driver. I, th- I really love, um, with Edgar Wright, once again, it, he's just a master with his editing. Mm-hmm. It's really well timed. It's just perfect. The soundtrack. The soundtrack is so Anytime badass. Anytime a person uses T-Rex on their soundtrack, <laughs> I love. I, Mark Bolin <laughs> is one of my favorite singer-songwriters of all time. And mm-hmm. he used uh, T-Rex in Scott Pilgrim. Yes. He had a few mm-hmm. seconds in The World's End and mm-hmm. now Baby Driver. It just It's nice to be able to hear T-Rex in movies. Yeah. And it's just a really badass film. It's it's kind of different from his other filmography. It's accessible. It's, um, it's not really... It's funny, but it's word for it. Yeah, it's, it's accessible. It's funny, but it's not as like a in-your-face comedy like his other films. The World's End, I think, is the most Edgar Wright. Edgar Wright. Movie. I would agree with that wholeheartedly. It's so beautifully constructed with the the movement from scene to scene and just how he uses transitions. It's he is a genius when it comes to post production. He's, he's such a great filmmaker. Honestly, mm-hmm. he's not made one bad film. I would have loved to have seen his Ant Man. Me too. Wow. Yeah. 
like there somewhere there's an alternate universe where that movie got made and I want <laughs> to go to that universe so badly. It's the same universe where I don't know Sam Raimi Spider-Man 4 happened. Sam oh. Raimi Spider-Man 3 wasn't bad in that universe. Mm, who knows. <laughs> Um, anyways, um, Okja, I don't know if I pronounced that right, but I think I did. I don't know. Anyways, great movie. Yeah, I, I didn't want to watch it for, I didn't want to actively watch it because I knew that it was going to be a movie that had the message of animal rights and anti-animal cruelty. And I thought it was going to shove it down my throat. And that's the reason I didn't want to watch it. Not that I'm against animal rights. Just sure. Yeah, that's what I kind of sound like. No, 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 I, I, gonna... I, I didn't want it to be in. I don't want anything like, to be shoved down animals. my face. Yeah. I get. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I get what you're saying. But he did a, a, a really good job. Uh, and the, the the pig itself, Okja, was mm-hmm. beautiful to look at. They did such a great job with the visuals. Was it an actual pig? Uh, yeah, they actually yeah, totally. mutated a pig and made it uh, a. a <laughs> no, it's all CG. Yeah, it's. it's no, I'm saying though. it was because I don't. I, don't, I haven't even seen. It doesn't really even look like a regular pig. That's it's, no, saying. it's like what, it's a super it? pig. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's really good. It gets really dark in certain places. Like there's a particular point towards the middle where oh. like oh they went there. It, okay. Uh, it's, uh, it's literally the raping of a pig. Yes. To breed. Well, yeah, that happens. And mm-hmm. what what I loved the most was that towards the end, the uh, the super pigs that they sent out, like they sent out twelve or fifteen I think super so. pigs to yeah. be raised by different people to see which one would be the healthiest. This was all a big show because they've already been making super pigs and have been slaughtering them for meat and getting prepared. Mm-hmm. They just haven't been making pretty looking ones. Interesting. Mm-hmm. That's the part that I was like, yeah, that's that's real. That's yep. Good I'd job. like to have a pet pig. Pet pigs are so adorable. Yeah, <laughs> They're smart, so they're a mess. <laughs> I bet, but if I had one pet, I'd be mm. a raccoon. I'd love to have a raccoon. Yeah, because they've got little hands. Mm. They run around. What a bunch of a holes. <laughs> um, uh, little hours. Uh, I did not see this one. I saw that one. <laughs> How was it? Yet, yet another movie that uh, I, I I saw alone. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Your long list. Yeah. No, I, I thought I had a long actually, list. Actually, in, in the in the theaters, I went alone because nobody wanted to go see it with me. Okay. So I, I I was more inclined to like it because I liked the idea of it with a bunch of dirty talking nuns. But <laughs> it was it was Aubrey Plaza being herself, Alison Brie she being herself, herself, and Kate Micucci being herself, and it was great because they were playing nuns in. 1400s, 1500s, something like that, really early on. <laughs> okay. And it was just hilarious to see the shenanigans they got into. And Dave Franco, Dave Franco was in it, didn't say a word. He was hired <laughs> really because of his looks, and he plays it. It's hilarious. He's a mute. <laughs> it's great. Oh, that is so cool. I'll have to check that out. Uh, a ghost story. I'm, If I'm correct, none of you saw this one. I've been on my list forever now. I don't want to overhype this. I really don't. But this is my favorite movie of the year. It is unlike anything I've ever seen in my life. It's it's a movie that kind of dares you to hate it with um, its editing, its editing choices. But it it really works and it really stuck with me. Like it made me think of this film days after seeing it. That doesn't happen a whole lot with movies, but this one really stuck with me. And the performances are all top notch. Um, so yeah, if you haven't seen Ghost Story. Definitely check it out. Um, Spider-Man: Homecoming. Who wants to go first? I like it. I actively uh, did not watch it because it just didn't strike me as intriguing. Personally. Oh, it's not intriguing. Or like, but I, it was enjoyable. It, but was it enjoyable? was fun? Yeah, cool. It was fun. I, I like I like Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Uh, there's a lot of. Uh, like his suit's really cool. Um, he has a nice dynamic. With he has a, an iron spider suit now, right? Kind of. Yeah. yeah. But but he had, you, but you get to see his old one. Uh, Michael Keaton was awesome in this movie. He was. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Because I, I, I was worried. Michael Keaton, okay, I will give the movie this because I've got some things to say about it. Michael Keaton is really um, good. I was worried about his performance because it seemed like such a fucking joke that he would go from doing Birdman. 
a oh, movie about how so he hated good. being or even like into the superheroes. Even and like he does a bird man villain thing. Yeah. And now like he went from Batman to Birdman, now the Vulture, all flying yeah. characters. <laughs> He's never gonna Did you see the founder? Yes. I, I love Oh, Batman. I thought he was perfect. I've seen that movie three he encapsulated times. Ray Kroc so mm, he wow. was very good in that. Yeah, that technically, 2016 that wasn't, film. That but, wasn't this year, but since we were talking about Michael Keaton, that, mm. I saw it this year though. Uh, it I did came too. out in January because they were trying to do the Oscars and that mm. failed. Yeah, uh, it's on, it's yeah, on yeah, Netflix it now too. All, so I end up just like putting it. Pretty sure it was all Netflix. Weinstein's fault for that, but. <laughs> Oh, I started the founder the other day, and it doesn't say the Weinstein Company. It says uh, TWC. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know if that was on accident, but that I... That was a choice that they made uh, back in, like, early 2010s, I think. Okay. So having so, yeah. certain films be TWC, and then certain films be Weinstein Company. Weird. Um, it, it looks nice, because you can't spell his name out. <laughs> There you go. And yeah. you can easily anyway, think that it's his company, too. <laughs> yeah, because, company. I mean, I put in any Tarantino movie, and I'm like, ah... Man. Come on. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Spider-Man. Here's the thing. Um, I've talked about Spider-Man quite a bit in the past, but I've never really come out and said this, but Spider-Man is one of my favorite fictional characters, period. Like, um, I have somewhat of a personal connection with the character. Like, um, the first two Sam Raimi Spider-Man films are great movies. Um, like, objectively, they are really well-made movies with a lot of heart and passion in it. And you can tell. And I got um, bit by a spider, so I have a connection to it. So. <laughs> Sweet. Um, and I have arachnophobia, so yeah. <laughs> but, Spider-Man's always been fun for me. <laughs> I have that first scene where we're actually climbing. That's actually pretty. Well yeah. See the, the the first Spider-Man I can watch when he gets bitten because it's just one spider. I can kind of like mm. block it out with my hands. Yeah. But in Amazing Spider-Man, you have There's a whole freaking room of spiders. It. Why? Why? Why would you do? And that? And then in the end, only one of them just bites him. That's it. <sighs> anyways, anyways, anyways. Um, the big thing with Homecoming is that I thought this was very underwhelming for me. Like, this movie doesn't really quite move you the way a Spider-Man movie should. Like, um, the big thing with um, Peter Parker, what makes him an enduring character, is the fact that he's relatable and that he's not a perfect protagonist. He has problems. Um, here, his prob- they they removed this fucker's problems in this movie. Like there's some things that genius, <laughs> yeah, He's a well, literal genius. The the whole fun of watching a Spider-Man movie is seeing him tackle real life problems like high school and college. And that's the big thing is that um, they were talking on and on about this being like a John Hughes movie. It's like that's a great approach for Spider-Man. That works perfectly. There's not much in it for that to justify that. It like instead it feels very focused on just informing you at every second it can that. Spider-Man is part of the MCU. Here are some references. And nothing felt fresh or unique with the Spider-Man elements either. I mean, it feels like the suit was only made just to sell toys. Like, I don't think it sold toys. I don't think so either. <laughs> but I, I went in with zero expectations. I don't care that much for Spider-Man. I, I was thoroughly entertained. That's Not, cool. Like, you had specific expectations it sounds sure. like about Spider-Man I don't care that he's not relatable I, mm. um, it's, it's the same thing where it's fun to like watch rich people on TV <laughs> it was fun to watch a like, super smart kid sure uh, just be badass but he becomes relatable because he tries to do the right thing and ends up letting down his superior anyway so there's other things that are relatable he I does, think they rehash the same Spider-Man over and over again it might he does but at the same time as that it feels like his problems are a Ease like in the bit where um, he goes to Washington D.C. with his um, with his school. Yeah, like he ditches um, the team, and like you would think that um, by doing that they would lose, but they end up winning, and then Peter doesn't have to face any consequences for that. And, oh, that's true. Yeah, I, like, never, I never saw it. I never looked at it like that. And like, there's all all sorts of instances of that. It's like th- throughout the movie, and that's. Part of the charm with Spider-Man is that he's got these problems that he has to deal with. And yeah. then he has consequences if he uh, can't handle them. A lot of that was filmed in Atlanta. Tom Holland is great in this movie, but he's he plays a character that I didn't really care for. And it, at times it was honestly boring, if I'm being perfectly honest. And if I'm being honest, I hated this movie. But 
I haven't lost faith. It's not like I've lost faith in Marvel or anything like that. It's just maybe this new Spider-Man is just a character that can't have solo movies. Like the Hulk. We've tried time and time again. The Hulk just doesn't have a good solo movie yet. So he needs to be a side character in other movies. Sure. Which we'll get to soon. Exactly. <laughs> um, but <laughs> They tied it in nicely with, uh, was it Civil War? Yeah, whatever he was filming the thing. I think that this. Uh, I didn't get funny. that. I didn't get that actually. Cause yeah, because he he's super excited to like be part of this. So it's he's, like, like don't but know who is it for? Your lines. Like expositional bra. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, look! Remember he did cool stuff. Mm-hmm. Look at it again from another angle. I think it, they just they just wanted to tie it in, and I mean it's a superhero movie. I don't have. I never have any expectations for superheroes. Sure, they're just not my thing. Uh, so I mean, when, when I, they thoroughly entertain me, they thoroughly entertain me. I will say though, the way the film ends kind of makes me not feel that compelled to watch any of the future Spider-Man films. What they do, the very end. Uh, I think they wrapped it up as just a one-off. I don't. I it, I didn't want to watch another one after that. But I was sure. also like, I, I, I we all really know that Marvel and, and Sony are not gonna just let it be a one off. No. Did, did you say for the end credits song? Oh, I did. Yeah. It's kind of funny. I did like the. I I will agree with you that yeah. the final end credit scene is really good. That was funny. Yeah. Really funny. It's like you thought. Captain America. Yeah. That was a funny one. Oh, Hannibal Burris was funny in it too. Hannibal there's Burris. A bunch of, it? There's a bunch of little things that I found. Really all right, funny. now yeah. I have to watch it. Yeah. No, he's, he 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 plays a gym teacher. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, right. I'm sold. He's a he's a Spider-Man fan, so he might have more merit here. But I completely enjoyed it. I'm sure. I am so sold just because of Hannibal Burris yeah. <laughs> as a Dude, gym teacher. I, you know, I he came um, to uh, over in Athens one time, and I had a little moment with him. I went to go see him stand up. Yeah, and he was and he was walking out, and and I kind of I kind of perked up like, oh, it's Hannibal Burris, and he looked at me like, don't you tell anyone, and I was like. <laughs> Your, your secret's safe with me, and then he walked away, and then he drove around Athens for a little bit before That's the awesome. show. But yeah, it was it was really funny, and I was the only one out of the line of people that saw him. It There's was, another it was really hand nicely done that came out this year that I cannot wait to talk about. Oh boy, um, but let's get to that then. So, oh, he was, oh, oh, not yet though. First, we gotta get through some apes. War for the Planet of the Apes. What do you think? I thought it was the most disappointing ending to a great trilogy. I still love the trilogy. I think they're all great films, but comparatively to Rise of the Planet of the that Apes and was Dawn intense, of the Planet of the Apes, oh, the trailer was great. The trailer was intense. There were some stupid moments in the movie, like the, the apes escaping from mm-hmm. the human uh, the compound. Yeah. How? Aren't there guards that are supposed to be looking all the time? You just <laughs> managed to dig a hole and escape. Ugh. I, I still <laughs> loved it, but it was just this. It was small little things that could have been fixed that may, would have made it a lot better. For sure. Me. Um, for me, I quite enjoyed this film. It's um, the story's not the most riveting thing in the world, but it's really a performance piece at the end of the day, and it's all excellent. Andy Serkis needs yeah. to get an Oscar. He does. He, he, people do not respect. Does he complain the about capital. that often? Because I because I hear a lot of other people, including myself, I don't complain think that so. there's not. I think he's I that humble of a that guy that doesn't. That yeah, he doesn't care. That's I thought Steve up. Zahn was mm-hmm. just as great as Andy Serkis when it came to the yeah. ape. Guys he played a uh, what was the little guy's name? The the blue jacket dude. There's Matty. another Andy Serkis movie that I can't wait to talk about. Oh boy. <laughs> Uh, but we're only halfway there. So. Really? Oh my god! I, I thought I thought we were see. No, I thought I we was, were actually. I thought we were doing like ten movies. No. So when I went to no, the back, no, no, I made a pun. You missed it. I made a pun. I made I a pun. Damn it! We're halfway there. Whilst you guys talk about Dunkirk, I'm going to use the restroom. Actually, sure, go Dunkirk. for it. Dunkirk. Because I have not seen Dunkirk, unfortunately. All right, you Dunkirk. You can go whichever one. I just went in there because it's further away from the recording device. Smart plan. Yeah, Ooh. that's Calvin's room in there. Just, yeah. There's okay. no Calvin in there. <laughs> Calvin's not home. Dunkirk. Um, so I am a huge Christopher Nolan fan. and I wouldn't call myself a huge Christopher Nolan fan. But, sure. But, th- but this one encapsulated a lot of the stuff that I do like about him mm-hmm. into a movie that I thoroughly enjoyed. Now, did you just see it in film? I'm sorry? Did you get to see it projected in film? Yes. Yes, yeah. I did. Cool. It was excellent. That was cool, too. It was, it was uh, satisfying. 
I mean, for me, Nolan is like, there's no other filmmaker right now that I really anticipate their films more than I do with Nolan. Nolan's the guy that got me um, into the art of filmmaking with um, The Prestige. That's the film that made me want to do this, for sure. Um, And he's made some great films as well. He did The Dark Knight. Um, He did Memento, which is excellent. Batman Begins. Um, and this is another one for him, another winner for him. I really, really dug it. And I got to say, Tom Hardy is so badass in this film. Um, a little bit of redeeming from his bad accent in The Revenant. <laughs> I loved him in The Revenant. Sure, he's Revenant. good in The Revenant. But, um, no, I, I love Dunkirk. It, it puts you in a position where a, a bunch of brave men and women mm-hmm. were put into uh, as far as you know having to go and rescue them and just the troops yeah. by themselves um there was controversy about this one too about it not being diverse that well so that's funny. how it was that's how i know and that's what i'm saying but i, I feel like it's it's worth it to, to at least i, mean, <sighs> I like don't get you people what is your problem just wanted to complain mm-hmm but Dunkirk was great. Dunkirk was excellent. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to get that on 4K. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets. Do you guys see that? Oh. Good God, was that disappointing. <laughs> I was disappointed by the previews. <laughs> the pre- the see, previews had here's... bits where the CG looked amazing, and then the CG looked really bad. Here's the thing. Um, this is coming from... But I, film... I don't like any of that CG. Like It doesn't sure. impress me. This is coming from a filmmaker whose work um, I've really admired. Like he did um, the Fifth Element, who, which is I love that movie for absurd it is. Um, and this does have its absurd moments that I do admittedly enjoy. Um, but like how I view with the Lego Batman movie, when it brings up the whole philosophical um, stuff with the film, it loses me honestly. And Rihanna, whenever Rihanna is in this film, she drags it. She is not what? an actress. She's <laughs> cast, I thought, because they, they knew that fans would go see it for her. Yeah. She was one, she's one of those people that has diehard loyal fans. Yeah. Which, more power to her. That's, that's awesome. But mm-hmm. when you have two fun. leads that have zero chemistry and only one of your leads, Dane DeHaan, has proven himself as a good actor, you, you really maybe shouldn't uh, have that film have a budget of a hundred plus million dollars. Right. I think it was actually two hundred something. God, even must more. have been because it was it was ridiculously expensive. Mm-hmm. Uh, girls trip. What what is this, Cole? Um, it's what everybody was going to see when I went to go see Dunkirk. It is. Oh. <laughs> it's essentially the other version of Rough Night, the Scarlett Johansson uh, party movie. But mm-hmm. Girls Trip had people like. Um, Damn it, I forget her name. Queen Latifah, thank you. Oh, Cole, thank you for being stupid. <laughs> Good job, Cole. Huh, Queen Latifah. Sponsor, Google. <laughs> <laughs> Queen Latifah was in it. Jada Pinkett Smith was in it. It was, to put it very poorly, it was the African-American party girl movie of the year. <laughs> Whereas we had the stupid white girl version with Rough Knight. <laughs> Girls Trip was actually very well made, very funny. Um, the trailer didn't give much away. Uh, it, right. it didn't give away the the best parts. I despise Jada Pinkett Smith as an actor, but she was actually likable in the movie. Hmm. So that was a plus. Cool. Overall, pretty good. Nice. Atomic Blonde. Who saw this? I did. What did you think? Because I've got mixed feelings on it. I thought it was fun action, but I am so tired of seeing female action stars that have to be silent and badass the whole time. Sure. I, I, mean, I thought that they could have had more depth to Charlize Theron's character. Mm. She fe- she felt empty to me. I might agree with that, actually. Um, I like the setting, the 80s setting. Mm. It, it worked really well, and the action's quite good. I like, seriously, that whole unedited... Um, Action, action shootout towards the end is yes. really worth seeing alone. Um, I also really like um, James McAvoy in the film as well. He's really fun. Um, He's always a good actor, I think. Aside from that, nothing really stuck with me. The plot felt convoluted in a lot of places, and it's just. I and I, I also got to say that the lesbian sex scene felt very pandering to me. Yeah, I don't want to 
belittle uh, a, a female action star, but sure. if you had to choose between Atomic Blonde and John Wick 2, go see John Wick 2. It's just mm-hmm. that it's so much better. Yeah. Because they made a real action movie, whereas Atomic Blonde, I felt like they were trying to make a female action movie. Mm-hmm. I gotcha. Uh, I'm just laughing at the next movie on the list. I didn't see this movie, but you did, Cole. Yeah. Tell us about the Emoji movie. Utter garbage. Just <laughs> such shit. I wasted 75 minutes of my life thinking... No, it can't be possibly that bad, and I I was wrong. The critics cannot, the critics and audience were both so right. It is so horrible. It is such <laughs> just bad movie. It's, the animation isn't even that great. It's just nah. It's <laughs> it's the meh emoji. Yeah, it's nah. <laughs> also you're casting Sir Patrick Stewart as the shit emoji. Really. <laughs> He's bored after well, the green room. Uh, <laughs> um, Detroit. Who saw this? Because I didn't yes. see it. No, but I really wanted to. Me too. Yes, it was so freaking good. Catherine Bigelow is seriously one of the greatest directors of all time be- just because of this movie. I cannot stress how much I loved this movie. I thought they did a great job with grabbing you and putting you into it. It felt like... It wasn't too shaky of a camera that it was mm-hmm. noticeable, but it was just shaky enough to where you felt like you were running with everybody. You yeah. felt like you were there. That's and a really hard balance to strike. It, it really is, and I was impressed because it didn't get too annoying. There were Maybe towards the end it was t- tiring, but mm-hmm. overall it wasn't bad. And Will Poulter, holy shit, that, <laughs> that kid can act. He's a likable person in real life. Mm-hmm. You're gonna freaking hate his character. He does it so well. He cool. plays such a horrible person. <laughs> and uh, John Boyega. Yeah, John Boyega is honest. Will Poulter was just such a scene scene stealer for me. I, I mm-hmm. he was so. Who did good. John Boyega play though? What kind of character did he play? If I remember correctly, he was one of the hostages yeah. in the, uh, okay. the situation. I saw it okay. one time. And then oh I, yeah! I tried the re-watching eyebrow it. Eyebrow guy from Revenant. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 forgot, I forgot his name. Yeah, he was in the, like uh, We're the Millers. I love that movie. Actually, I thought <laughs> it was the Millers? hilarious. Yeah. Me too. Me too. <laughs> That's funny, man. That's a, this is a funny movie, man. It's a it's a it's a horrible boss. Uh, yeah, esque movie where you're just it's just, it's just fun. Until I don't have to mention. That. I don't have to mention that. <laughs> um, Brigsby Bear. Yes, I did. I did. Kyle Mooney um, from SNL. This is one of his first big breakout movies. I don't want to say too much about it because mm. it's it's best to it's it's just a weird movie. It's weird, but I just I agree with my friend. He he, watch, he and I watched it separately, but he said after he watched it, he instantly put it back on because it was just so good. It was so well made. Nice. I Very didn't original. see it, but I really wanted to check it out. Very original story. Cool. It's got Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill! Hey! <laughs> Obligatory Star Wars mention. Yo. <laughs> you have to. The Dark Tower. Now, before you say this, I gotta yeah. say this. I didn't see it, but correct me if I'm wrong. This is basically the last action hero, but without the fun. Yeah. I, yeah. I, uh, I <laughs> love the books. The books were so great, and the idea of the movie was intriguing to me because the way the books are set up, it's a continual cycle of trying to save the world and never being mm-hmm. able to save it. Yeah. So it, it made sense in the idea of it's not based off of the books, but it's also not not based off of the books, you know? Yeah. But it was hindered by the fact that it was PG-13. And I get it, the, kids, the, the books are kids' books, but it just felt reserved. Idris Elba deserved so much better. Mm-hmm. He's such yeah. a great actor. He deserved to have a, a great film. And Matthew McConaughey was a great villain. It was great casting. It was just, I think they wanted to make a PG-13 family action Stephen mm-hmm. King movie because they had another big R one coming out this year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. Um, Wind River. I really want to see this one. Yeah. But I didn't get to see it. Jeremy Renner was fantastic. He, That's he, what I hear. I don't usually like him. Uh, I think don't like him in uh, the Avengers movies. I thought he was only likable in Age of Ultron because they they made his character more funny and (laughs) his wife was awesome. 
yeah the family aspect but Wind River proved to me that Jeremy Renner can hold his own he can he can be a real actor not just a, a studio guy cool um, this one I did see The Glass Castle um, did any of you guys see it? I did not no I wanted to I, I like the director he did um, yeah Short Term 12 and I'm Not a Hipster if I'm remembering mm. correctly um, this one was fine um my prob- the performances are all excellent, um, really good performances. The problem I had with it was that it really chickened out on going dark. Like, um, there's hints of it, like, there's, um, the overall overtone of it is quite dark with, um, what this, um, it's about, an, like, um, an alcoholic father who's quite abusive, um, but they really chicken out on actually really exploring that, and because then it's all presented as if it's, like, a happy time for the family, Mm-hmm. Interesting. It's um, it didn't quite work for me, but it's, like I said, the performances are all good. Ingrid goes west. I didn't see this. I did uh, another Aubrey Plaza movie that was pretty fantastic. Mm-hmm. Creepy. Um, not really what I was expecting. It was very very creepy. Aubrey Plaza played a stalker character. Okay. And works her way into Allison. Bre- no, no, not Allison Brie. Who's the other chick in Ingrid Goes West? Ooh. Who's gonna get this first? Uh, he is, because I don't even know how to spell that. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, but it, it was really creepy because it, it, it went to the dark places uh, that are inherent in mm. the stalkers following celebrities. Elizabeth Olsen. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Way off. Oh, and, I wanted to see that movie. That's Wyatt right. Russell. I love Wyatt Russell. He was in um, Linklater's 2016 movie, Everybody Wants Some. That's okay. the stoner character from California. He was in the Black Mirror episode with the uh, video game and the AR, VR oh, kind of yeah. thing. He's the main dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think he's just a phenomenal actor that's yeah. finally getting some, some good work. Hitman's Bodyguard. Uh, did you want to touch on this briefly, Cole? That was a hell of a fun movie. Was it? That was just a bunch of fun. Not, Turn your brain off and just get ready for a bunch of awesome Samuel L. Jackson and Ryan Reynolds banter. <laughs> nice. Uh, here's one that all of us have seen, actually. Uh, Logan Lucky. Two thumbs up. <laughs> Two thumbs yeah. very up. Two thumbs up. There we go. End of review. No, no, I'm just kidding. Um, it's another great Steven Soderbergh movie. <laughs> and I was, I really wanted to watch it in theaters and support it because he did a new thing. He independently financed the movie by uh, raising his own money and then also selling off the rights to the movie before it was made for mm-hmm. overseas and distribution like that. Oh, yeah. It amazing. was, um, I gotta say, really solid performances, uh, especially from um, Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig was so freaking great. There like, wasn't a bad performance in it, though. No, no not at all. But and I, There were just performances out. that were that be, much better, just the next yeah, tier. Sure. I'll be honest, there's something about it that didn't quite stick with me, and I'm not too sure what it was. Um... It might be the fact that it kind of played out kind of exactly as I thought it would. Not that it was bad, but... Okay. I think the thing that me. stuck out with me the most about it that was, like, a annoying about it was the ending with Hilary Swank's character coming back to the bar. Yeah, like, maybe. They, what, were they setting it up for a sequel? Why is she there? I don't know. I just, also, I didn't like her character. It didn't really... Sure. She didn't really have that much emotion. She wasn't in it that much. Death. I know. She, she was... Which is why it wasn't uh, ruining for me, because she yeah. was like five minutes in the end. That's it. Mm-hmm. So it was okay. But mm-hmm. aside from that, I loved the heist sequences. Um, that was really fun. And then I loved the the scene with his daughter at the pageant. Yeah. That's such a great scene. Like, song of the year right there. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I, that, I just, I walked out like... Of the theater, just happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just yeah, it was just a it fun movie. Up for... Aside from my problems with it, it's such a fun watch yeah. at the end of the day, and I'd love to watch this movie again for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I definitely want to buy it because I, I saw it in theaters, and then I got it on Redbox when it first came out, and mm-hmm. after I returned it, uh, Redbox, um, I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy this because <laughs> it's like one of those movies, like, just like the nice guys, where you just, I, I think that those movies are really similar, and just the rewatchability, just sure. everything's fun about it. The Nice um, Guys was such a great movie. Yeah. Yeah. Shane Black is... I'm so excited for his Predator movie coming out next year. Oh, I hope it's good. Yeah. Um, nice Guys is one of my favorites. Ever. Yeah. Actually. Um, Patty Cakes. I haven't seen this. What is it? Um, it's the story of 
uh, Patricia Patty Cakes, a rapper from New Jersey that starts to become a big thing. Like she actually is starting to make it. And it's just her story of uh, trying to make it as a rapper and mm-hmm. trying to beat out because she's an overweight white woman. Not really the image of hip hop that everybody would associate with rap, and that's kind. Of, it, it shows that. A lot of people belittle her because they're like, "Oh, you, you couldn't be a rapper. You couldn't." Mm. But she has some sick bars. She she's not an actual rapper in real life, but she damn well did a good job. It one of the most popular films of the year for sure. I actually didn't get to see it. I saw it. Was it good? Um, I thought it was decent. I know this this movie has its fans, and that's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm glad that people are are really enjoying it. But for me. Um, one of my biggest problems with the film is, um, and this is one of the most annoying um, horror cliches I can think of, and it's like these kids are tormented by like a fucking clown demon monster, and they don't think to tell anyone about it until what feels like a good hour well, into the movie. They don't touch on it too well in the movie, but in the book, the idea is that the kids can't talk to any of the adults because Pennywise has this aura around the town that causes mm-hmm. the adults to become horrible people which is sure. why um, the the red shirted bully's father is shown that way and that's why uh, the, the, the chick's father is disturbingly creepy mm. spacey-esque should we say yeah <laughs> They left out a lot of other stuff too. Yeah. yeah, thank thank God they did. I do not want to see a bunch of kids having an orgy in the sewer. That's no. what I heard happens. It's, in it. it's in the book. It makes sense. I'm not saying that I wanted to see it, but in the book, it's justified and it's not out of place. But, right. But it just wouldn't come off the same in the in the movie. Mm-hmm. There's just no way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because in the movie, it represents a specific thing. It represents them getting older. Yeah, but in it movie the, form for something that a lot of people are going to go see. Mm-hmm. In, in, yeah. in the book, it represents that they they dealt with something that they really shouldn't deal with, and then they decide, oh yeah, we're ready to have sex, and they know, it's kind mm-hmm. of like in the back of their heads, they know they're not really ready, but we just dealt with the, our biggest fucking fears. What else can we sure mess with? I haven't read the book, so I wouldn't know. Um, mother, who saw this one? I did. Disappointed. My unfortunately. Mom. It's a movie that I would say I admire more than I would say I like it. I, I would completely agree because I like what he was trying to go for and I like that he took the uh, the risks. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is a movie that has some serious balls. Yeah. <laughs> my, uh, my main problem was Jennifer Lawrence. I just don't yeah. like her as an actress anymore. I think they've overused her and or she's not changing. <laughs> <laughs> she was great in that. <laughs> Weird, weird Kristen Wiig performance. Yeah. Dropped out of nowhere. I was so surprised. <laughs> um, Brad status. Uh, what is that? Uh, ben Stiller plays Brad, uh, the father of a son that's going to a bunch of colleges. He's uh, well, touring a bunch of colleges like mm-hmm. Harvard and, and all these big Ivy League schools. Things that Brad himself was never able to attain. And then as he's going along this college tour, he sees that all of his old friends from high school and college are super successful, and mm-hmm. he's a, a divorcee accountant, I think, or some yeah. some medial job. But it's it's more of a Ben Stiller performance piece that I thought was very well done. You could see that he's growing as an actor, and I did not include it on the list because wikipedia didn't have it for some reason but oh. the meyerowitz stories new and selected was also okay. really really good i thought dustin hoffman was fantastic in that he was phenomenal as the old uh, father patriarch figure uh kingsman the golden circle it was fine it was fun but i don't think it was as good as the first no no way it was fun the first time i thought and it after that, it just gets worse and worse. It's sure. one of those movies that the more you watch it, the the less you'll like it. It's weird. It's like, do the Brits actually view Americans this way? They probably do. Probably. Because, yeah, I'm not surprised. Why not? I was surprised that uh, I did not hate Channing Tatum's performance. 
Um, and this is something I gotta ask. I to love you guys. Channing Tatum. I think he's awesome. I think he's getting to. Uh, I'm still. Tainted he's impressed by me every memory. single time. I'm still tainted by the uh, the memories of his early stuff, like oh, before Magic know. Mike. Magic Mike, I thought was actually pretty Magic good. Mike's good. It's, it's um, Soderbergh. It's how can Soderbergh mess up? Yeah, him. He was in Hail Caesar. He was in Hail Caesar. Yeah, impressed me in that. Right. He was in Hateful Eight. Impressed me in that. And Logan Lucky pretty much put a bow on it. Um, mm. It's just it, it's it's that I don't expect anything from him. Sure. Yeah. Again, so like when, I'm talking, so when and you go see him, and he, ex- and, and he exceeds my yeah. expectations every time. And I gotta ask you guys this. Elton John in this movie, I can't tell for the life of me if this is the most awesome thing he's ever done, or the most embarrassing. Over both. Yeah, it is. It's it's nice to see that the the dogs were named Benny and Jet, and it yeah. was the fun Elton performance, and it tied in with the first one. That was the part that I that I did like. It tied in like Julianne Moore. Oh, all these celebrities go missing. I thought might as well take one myself. I yeah. thought that was funny. That was ha ha ha. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. <laughs> um, Loving Vincent. Now, this is one I really, really wanted to see, but I did not get to see it. How is it, Cole? Does it deliver? It's life-changing, honestly. You, I cannot look at an animated movie the same again because the, the amount of work and effort and passion they put into the project really shows. It, it is a moving painting. And I love seeing the, the the oil painting aspect of it because they did do oil paintings and then 3D Incredible. scanned it so that you can see in the image like where the 3D part oh, would come cool. in of the the painting. So it's That's just it's that just extra so stuff. beautiful. Yeah, it's, if it does not win the Academy really Award, enjoy. it is that is a crime. Mm-hmm. Disney should not win again. They've won for the last ten years, save for Rango, which won, but mm-hmm. they've won every other year. They they should yeah. just. Not this year. Yeah. I feel like it's not going to happen, though. But we'll see. Um, here's one we've all seen. Blade Runner 2049. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm rubbing my hands together. <laughs> it's my number one. It's such a great movie. It's, it's a great film, I should say. That is, This is a, this is a film that's going to go down in history as one of the the greatest neo-noir sci-fi mm. movies of all time. It will because it takes a little bit to get used to. It. Not for me and I probably not for for you guys either, no. but but for for the vast majority of people it's something that's kind of hard to wrap your mind around. Um, why are there so many close-ups of Ryan Gosling looking confused? Because that's tension building. There's things like it's, that that It's claustrophobic. Take, it's it's he yeah. he can't escape from what he knows is his programming, which I thought, and you're right there with him the they entire did a great time, job. yeah. And you're and you're and you're happy, and then you're depressed, and then you're happy, and then you're depressed. Roger Deakins needs to win a fucking Oscar this year. <laughs> it is 13 nominations too late, <laughs> man. Um, but yeah, I'm inclined to agree as well. This is an excellent film. Blade Runner is one of my all-time favorite films, of course. Um, so good. The final cut, of course, but. Of course. I mean, um, who doesn't love the narration that Harrison Ford provides on oh, the work print? <laughs> um, but this is just an excellent film. I really enjoyed it. I love that it was all like the philosophical questions it was bringing oh, up. Yeah. It's a movie that really d- does get you thinking. You know? The props. philosophical questions. <laughs> the you props. have to mention the props. The, um, the prop I gotta pull this up. I made Joy, a... um, uh, what is it called? It's the not an emulator. It's a the, uh, the stick that he has. Yeah, to take the, her with the, yeah, to take, yeah, that's amazing. The thing at the top that that makes her a hologram is incredible. Uh, the the what about the, the memory builder? Yeah, yeah, that that's incredible. Awesome. The new blaster is incredible for someone that that's completely obsessed with the with the bulldog blaster from the original. Um, it's just yeah. perfect. I was just disturbed when I first watched it during the uh, the threesome scene with Joy mm-hmm. and the prostitute and yeah. Ryan Gosling because it was so creepy. Like, what if this is what life is going to become? Like, what if prostitution is going to take that next level where you're not just prostituting? No, those prostitutes are replicants through the pleasure mm-hmm. replicants. It's still just disturbing yeah. to me to think that there's mm-hmm. like prostituting the body to that extent yeah. it saddens me like that that they consider that what they have to do mm-hmm. like uh, and one of the biggest uh, points of of that scene too is to 
uh, show the audience that Joy is in, isn't there for emotional support. She's there to to serve as like a, a digital flashlight yeah. for uh, Gosling's character, Kay. Mm-hmm. Um, but, or Joe, which is cool. Um, yeah. But she's she's there to, and, and they agree on things, and she... And she makes them dinner, and there's just so many cool things about their relationship. Their dynamic is incredible. And then when he when he's able to take her out, it adds a completely new layer to Joy. And the scene where he's standing there, and the advertisement comes down, mm-hmm. and and doesn't the advertisement call him Joe? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's rough. It's creepy. That's it rough. It's... And it makes and it, and he's sitting there, and his nose is broken. And he's looking <sighs> up at this thing. It makes you wonder how much of what Joy heard. I can't those not to the people. How yeah, much, I, how much did did she report back? And and people have been have been equating this movie to her, and I don't think that it that that doesn't do either movie justice because they're both they're very still original. very different. They there's are. just one there's just one aspect that they're linking to each other, which is okay. Humans are good at that kind of thing, uh, linking two things together and finding familiar familiarities. But it's not. It doesn't even begin to scratch the surface of how complex of a movie this is. Mm-hmm. And I'm afraid that it will be the end of the smart science fiction movie. I fear it is too. Um, I, I just got to pull this up while I have it. Um, I made a meme. Um, didn't get very popular, unfortunately. But I just thought I'd share you guys. I'll, I'll, post, a, I'll post a picture of it uh, in the video itself. But Oh my god. Cool. Yes. His yes. uh, his spinner too was fucking awesome. Yes, <laughs> um, um, I love. I can't jacket. say that. Yeah. His jacket was just. Yeah, like, you can buy that jacket. Ass. That is that's a cool jacket. Um, Dave Batista is showing his chops as a real actor. I think he was phenomenal. I didn't get to mention away. this for um, Guardian Protein uh, Farmer. I didn't get to mention this when we talked Guardians too, but he is a gem in that movie. He he is seriously branching out from just being a wrestler typecast person and now he's getting real roles and I think that's phenomenal mm-hmm. I agree. he deserves them he's doing a fantastic yeah. job mm-hmm. the only thing I wasn't really um, impressed with with this film was the score by Hans Zimmer which it does its job fine um, wow. yeah exactly it's the wow. which that is not really it shouldn't be a score that should be a sound effect yeah. Hans yeah. Zimmer did a great job creating a sound effect, but continually using. I'm it. I'm, I'm honestly fine with it, just because. I mean, to me, some, uh, the original had a lot of those elements to it. Yeah. I don't think I think it's. Played to me, it's a far much. cry from the original um, score, but that's just me. But other than that, this was such a phenomenal film, and it's mm-hmm. I really loved it. Um, I think I'm the only one who saw this next one, uh, the Florida Project. I did really want to watch it. I love Sean Baker. He's a mm-hmm. phenomenal director. Yes. Um, I'm not going to say too much about it, but this is um, a really, really excellent film. Great performances. Really, especially from Willem Dafoe in particular. He's really good in this film. He's one of my favorite actors. Um, yeah, I, I really don't want to say too much about it. It's that good of a movie. It's in my. It's actually in my top ten. Hmm. So... Check it out. Now, this one, I know you do have a lot to say, Cole. Oh, my God, yes. And while you do that, I'm going to use the restroom real quick. So oh, my gosh. Brawl, you have the floor. Brawl in Cell Block 99. Um, it, it's the sophomore effort from S. Craig Zaylor, who used to be a novelist. And, and he wrote so many great books that, that he then decided to make the medium into film. And he did that with uh, Bone Tomahawk a few years ago with Kurt Russell Patrick Wilson, um, Richard Jenkins. There's so many people in that movie, and it's such a great film. It's it, it's one of the greatest westerns of all time. It, Kurt Russell gives a great performance as a sheriff, just trying to protect his townspeople and the the Native Americans that S. Craig Zaylor created for this. Uh, these these cannibal like Native Americans, um, they were disturbing. They had these weird modifications on their body where it's like pieces of bone stuck inside their throat to give a, a weird yell or something. That's that's, that's Bone Tomahawk, but Brawl in Cell Block 99 was, I, I think, just as good because Vince Vaughn showed he can be an action star. He can be somebody that has real depth to his character. Like he He's a drug runner that gets sent to prison and then has to go, go to the maximum security and find some somebody so that they can uh, 
um, let his wife go who mm-hmm. is being held hostage and she's pregnant like very very pregnant and the violence in the movie is it's leveled out like across the whole film so it's not too violent in certain areas but it's just graphically realistic at points he there are some deaths like Vince Vaughn will smack somebody's head down on the ground put his foot on the back of their head and then scrape their face against the floor rubbing off all the skin and bone there's um decapitation arms being broken in glorious detail it, this is not a movie for the faint of heart it is very violent but it's beautiful and it's the colors are so washed out it gives it this nice 70s grindhouse B movie feel so perfect I, awesome. I, I cannot speak highly enough of this movie I, I love S. Craig Zaylor and I just heard today from my roommate that he's now making another movie with Vince Vaughn and Mel Gibson that's going to be a detective grindhouse movie huh. That I'm excited for. I'm, I'm back, everyone. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> I'm back. Uh, happy Death Day. I liked it. I thought it was uh, surprisingly fun. It, was, it wasn't really a, a horror movie so much as it was a sci-fi comedy, actually. Huh. Um, it's the, the Groundhog's Day feel where it's repeating the same day over and over mm. and over again. but Or Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah, Edge of Tomorrow, they, that was a one that did it well. I think Happy Death Day did it uh, well enough, too. They did a unique just enough to, cool. to make it its own. Nice. Um, the Foreigner. I didn't see this one. How was this? <laughs> a lot of fun. Cool. Uh, Jackie Chan wasn't just kicking ass with his uh, fists and feet anymore. He was using guns and being a badass. Oh, snap. Awesome. Yeah. Um... Who saw the snowman? I must unfortunately say I was one of them. I did too. Okay. This is one of the worst films I've seen all year. Like, you can tell when you're watching it that it's an unfinished film. They didn't get to shoot everything. The editing in this film is terrible. It just, it feels like they were trying to push out a movie because they knew Michael Fassbender was a hot commodity and Mm. a detective movie was fun. And I mean, bless his soul, Michael Fassbender is fantastic. He did the best he could with what he had. Exactly, but uh, this film, this film. I also wasn't particularly a fan of them casting a bunch of non-Icelandic actors to take over the parts. Sure. Because it it is an Icelandic book. Um, It's an Icelandic story and, yeah. and the, that right I think I I would have loved seeing it as an Icelandic movie with subtitles in English because mm. I think that would have been the best way to capture uh, the, the, the actual movie making it a foreign film and not a big American production yeah mm-hmm. um, here's one I didn't see uh, The Killing of a Sacred Deer who saw this one? Oh, I saw it yes it was really 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 good it was just it's another one of those movies that's uh, divisive for people because it is art. It, uh, the, the director, Yorgos Lanthimos's Unique is the nice way to say it. I think the, the more accurate way to say it is jarring. fucked up yes. and jarring. jarring. Yes, he has a very unique... Mind and it's not humor either. It's just a, no. it's just a take on taboos, yeah. like death and sex. And in this one, fetish. There's a lot of that kind of stuff in there too. Um, it touches on a lot of stuff. Which he has a really sick sense of seeing the stories people in the theaters cringing at certain. Oh boy! I was I was with an entire group that knew exactly what they were getting in. I went I went to Atlanta, saw some Linux. Uh, it was the only place they were playing it actually. Uh, so everybody in there knew exactly what they were getting into. Um, there's probably only 15 people that even fit in there. Unfortunately, um, in L.A., uh, people will just go watch a movie and not really look at it. So it, a lot of Killing people walked out. That sounds interesting. I know. Like <laughs> when I when I saw Hacksaw Ridge, a lot of people didn't know what they were getting into, and they walked out because it was too violent. Like they weren't expecting a certain level of. Violence. Oh, well, they went to go see it because it was like a Christian movie. Yeah. yeah, they went to go see it because they knew Mel Gibson was making a, a Seventh Day Adventist praising movie, which. I think he did a good job of making the the characters likable, but I think he went heavy handed with a lot of the religious themes and motifs. Yeah, I might agree with that. Yeah, for sure. Um, Suburbicon, <laughs> how was this? <laughs> oh my god, it was oh, so bad. It's okay. It was We're so here disappointing. For you. It, Coen Brothers wrote this script. You have a badass cast of Matt Damon, Julianne Moore, Oscar Isaac, bunch of 
cameos. And Clooney fucked it up. It was Clooney. He made it heavy-handed. It was a social huh. satire about race. Kind of. I say kind of because there's maybe three mentions of uh, the black family, and it mm. is only one black family in the town. And then it doesn't come back to it at all. It's just, it's very poorly made. Mm. That's a shame. Very shame. Jigsaw. I didn't see it. <laughs> I love Saw. I have seen every single Saw movie. I hope to go see them all in theaters. I know I've only seen the first two in theaters. Who directs Saw? Releases. The, the first one was, um, I forget his name, but he, he did The Fate of the Furious, I think. James Wan? Oh. Yes, James yeah. Wan. Thank you. Okay. Um, one of my friends. Mine. Jigsaw was fantastic. I loved it because it was, it felt like the old Saw movies, but the Sparrow Brothers brought that, a twist to it where it was, it was a prequel to Saw. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it, it was seeing how he became jaded and whatnot. And I loved the Sparrow Brothers. They did a movie uh, with Ethan Hawke called Predestination. That's amazing mm-hmm. about time travel. Cool. Paradox. Yeah. Um, Thor Ragnarok. Thor yes. Fraggle Rock. Yes. <laughs> if there is one thing that I can praise about this movie, like utterly and completely, it is Taika Waititi's character, the the rock yes, creature. I love Korg. Korg. Thank and then you. My favorite. I gotta say, my favorite line in the entire film is, comes from him, and he says, "Piss off, ghost." <laughs> my favorite line from Korg was the uh, when he's holding the the wooden the uh, tr- uh, trident, and he's like. Well, this isn't really good for anything, except maybe stabbing uh, three vampires that are huddled together. Because <laughs> I loved what we do in the shadows. I it do was too. Such a great movie. He, here's the thing with this um, film: it, I've been looking forward to this film all damn year. Like Taika would te- like I had a pleasure like watching his films over the past few years or so. Like what we do in the shadows is really good, and uh, recently he did um, Hunt for the Wilder People. Yes, that which was, was so good. good. Um, I was looking forward to this, and the fact that this was going to be the way they were selling this was it's going to be like a, a Thor and Hulk movie in space. They're just fighting monsters, and that's it. That was like, I'm sold. This is going to be, this sounds like so much fun. And it is fun. And it's really funny. It's prob- I, I, I will say, this is probably the funniest Marvel movie they've made. I was laughing my ass off the whole time. I was so... <laughs> like, I was smiling for, like, a, I was smiling throughout it. it it's a good, fun time. But my problem with it is that I went into it thinking it would be one of those like um, a John, like a John Carpenter or a um, Paul Verhoeven type of movie where they're just way too clever for their own good, and it's not really that. It's just your standard. It's another Marvel movie with funny circumstances in the film, which it we I should have expected that because uh, sure. I know Kevin. Feig, the producer of all of the Marvel movies, is Feige. Feige, I Feige. think so. Uh, whatever, whatever <laughs> that weird dude's. <laughs> no, I, I like the dude. It's just he he has a grasp on the films that mm-hmm. he doesn't want to let go, and he doesn't want to. I, I think he doesn't let the directors make it their own. Sure, it's, it's all it all feels like it's totally. I mean, the only movie. exception I feel to that is um, it's James Gunn. Yeah, James Gunn is. He's such a strong artist that he can get what he wants into a film no matter what. I mean, it also kind of helps that the Guardians are separate from the other Marvel characters, yeah. so there is that as well. Um, but I do want to stress this. Despite my um, negative feelings towards it, um, and another thing I do want to say, the Hulk felt kind of underutilized in this film. Yeah. I I, I wish there was more Hulk, but I do like the idea of what they're doing. I, I've heard I do the, too. the rumors were... That Hulk is getting technically his own solo movie by doing a third of other people's movies. So a third mm-hmm. in the Thor movie and sure. another third in another movie and etc. But Okay, that'd be cool. I, I liked his, uh, his, uh, the fact that the Hulk, when he crashed in the, uh, the, the ship, the mm. Avengers ship, he was the Hulk and then he landed in the, the weird Jeff Goldblum realm and he started to learn to talk and be cognitive. Yeah. I think that's awesome. I love that, that whole environment of um, these weird like I love weird like um, I love weird movies for one thing um, but like I, that whole culture it's just so wonderfully weird. I just wish we got more of it. Honestly. For me Thor was the best after credits scene of all time because you have Jeff Goldblum after the revolt going you know 
We couldn't be here without me for you to revolt. I think it's Ty. Good job, everybody. Good job. <laughs> that was just great. That was Jeff Goldblum being himself, and I, I love Goldblum that. was so funny in this movie. And I also I, I have to give a quick shout out to him, uh, Carl Urban. Yeah, Carl Urban was great. He was underutilized too, I think. He was, but I don't know. I felt like they used the, a good amount of him. If they used too much, then it would have become his own yeah. film. But I think they used a good amount of him. Um, but yeah, really fun film. Um, Last Flag Flying. What is this? Uh, another Linklater movie uh, he did with Lawrence Fishburne, Steve Carell, and Brian Cranston. All right. Um, it's a very performance-driven movie. Um, about three veterans that meet up again after one of the, their friends kills himself. And mm-hmm. it's just, it's a really touching movie. Now here's one uh, we've all seen, and that is the Netflix documentary, Jim and Andy, The Great Beyond. Featuring so a very good. special contractually obligated mention of Tony Clifton. Yep, yep. <laughs> That's the full title. <laughs> Tony Clifton is so awesome. Uh, <laughs> Jim Carrey's insight throughout this entire documentary, his narrative that he brings to the entire story is perfect. He yes. is a gem yeah. that, that has graced us with great movies and great philosophy. I mm-hmm. think he's just a phenomenal dude. I've been a Jim Carrey fan for as long as I can remember. Like I remember growing up with watching, rewatching constantly The Mask. Uh, that's such a... I can quote that movie. <laughs> but... Um, and then... He's made great films as well. Like, Man on the Moon is a really good film, which Man is what this is documentary so is based on. Andy yeah, Kaufman's one of my favorite uh, stand-up comedian. Well, I guess I should say he's a performance artist. Because mm-hmm. that's really what Andy Kaufman was. Yes. And seeing the, the process of Jim Carrey essentially losing himself and becoming Andy Kaufman, I want to believe that Andy Kaufman went back into Jim Carrey and was like, yeah, I'll come back for my movie. Mm-hmm. I want to believe that. Because it was so... Real, yes. Um, oh boy, I'm the only one who saw this, so get ready for like a few minutes of. How did you survive? Um, I didn't. Yeah. Part of me died inside. Um, <clears throat> I'm talking about Justice League. Um, this movie didn't surprise me in the slightest because I knew it was going to be a wreck. Because the fact that they <laughs> the mark they said good film. The fact that they said that we're going to go in a different tonal direction, we're going to go lighthearted, despite the fact that the previous films are like dark and super serious films, it's like there's going to be some tonal inconsistencies throughout. And this is even before Joss Whedon was brought on board. I would be very interested in seeing just the uh, Snyder cut. I don't think we're ever going to get that, but... I do want to say that this this is a film that no matter how bad it is, I don't think I can ever truly hate it because of the circumstances of why Snyder had to leave and how how sure and powerful that. As that much as I'm not a fan, us. as much as I'm not a fan of Zack, Zack Snyder, oh, Snack Snyder, as much as I'm not a fan of Zack Snyder, no one should have to go through that. Seriously, that is that awful. I, the fact that I, I even saw online uh, fans complaining uh, just pissed me off. Like, no, you, you have no idea what he's having to go through right now. But I, absolutely. His daughter, unfortunately, took her life. Wow. And she, I, I don't remember how old she was, but she wasn't too terribly old. No, and it's like um, he, um, so he, what happened then was that he left production for Justice League and Joss Whedon was brought on to do reshoots and rewrites. And probably is credited with making the film feel even worse because mm-hmm. tonally it's different. The, it the is. way that Snyder directs and Whedon directs. Snyder is a very, very good visual director. I think he would be a fantastic visual artist director, not an actual mm-hmm. film director. Sure. Being in charge of how the CG looks or how you would want to shoot something, that's his specialty. He's He's a very good person when it comes to montages and showing that, but when it mm. comes to substance, I don't think he's quite nailed it yet. No. Except with Watchmen, the, the, the ultimate cut. Yes. Watchmen, wow. that's a very that's good so movie. Great. I'm pretty excited for the HBO show. Mm. Very true. But the thing with Justice League, here's the big problem, is um, I think there's some moments in here that feel like in another movie, it could work really well. Like the... the notion of like Superman and um, the Flash racing each other at the end or like Flash Superman's like 
he's talking to five. He's like, "All right, you go save these people. I'm gonna go to um, save these people over there." He's like, "Okay." So he's the, the Flash moves a car out of the city. He's like, "Okay, you guys are safe." Then he looks over. Superman's picking up an entire building full of people. Like that's a cute Superman moment. Mm-hmm. How was how was that mustache cover up? Oh God! It is distracting as hell. Did it, you see Gillette had like a like yes a, like a special? I actually posted um, so <laughs> on Facebook. Funny. I made a I made a little sort of meme of like um, the Gillette <laughs> Justice League pack, and then his face. It's, and I said like Gillette, not even once. <laughs> it's it is. <laughs> I just astounding don't understand to me. how that happens. Yeah, like it's astounding to me that the WB would be, uh, not WB, I, I should say, um, the other studio that Henry Cavill was working for. Well, why can't he just use a fake mustache? Yeah, I know. Why can't you just shave it off, shoot the scenes with anybody like that, that doesn't have That is have an Henry intense Cavill. contract right there where you're not even allowed to Seriously. have a fake so mustache. It's so weird. They look the exact same. I did. Why, I wasn't a fan of the Flash. He was just obnoxiously unfunny. How was Aquaman's underwater scenes? I heard those were pretty uh, bad. Uh, yeah, they are. <laughs> like, um, like imagine, and then don't even get me started with Steppenwolf, the villain of this film. See, up until you just said Steppenwolf, I didn't know who the villain was. I it's thought Steppenwolf. it was just Justice League so, and shit. Basically, every let me put it to you this way: of how bad Steppenwolf is. Imagine everything bad you've heard about him from everyone. It's worse. It's much, much worse. Who plays Steppenwolf? I don't even know. He has such a dubbed over voice that I Maybe couldn't... that's better for the actor. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot who played him. Um, uh, Cyborg seemed mildly interesting in the film, but they didn't really explore him that well. Um, and then Superman's resurrection is just... Wait, what? Superman comes back? <gasps> Shocker! What? Man, uh, but... <laughs> Really, like, are you seriously that stupid to put it in the ending of Batman v Superman that his grave is? Shaped? But the way Come they bring on. him back is that they literally dig up his grave and bring him back using the mother box. Like, I wasn't expecting that to happen. What? <laughs> they the, literally what? dig up his grave. That's... Ugh. that is so, so stupid. <laughs> it's Just Superman. Kind of... Yeah. He's I know, well, super. That's what I'm saying. You should expect that. <laughs> he, he should <laughs> pop out of the freaking grave and go, "Where's this bad guy? Gonna teach him but some then, American justice." <laughs> then that's the other thing as well is that he suddenly morphs into the Christopher Reeve Superman, Ugh. and that like, which is, <sighs> I wanted that to happen, but the fact that there was no like. Natural um, transition from the mopey Superman. You to could that. almost say that his new Christopher Reeves one didn't really have a leg to stand on. Oh, oh damn! <laughs> damn! I'm a horrible person. <laughs> oh, how could you? This podcast just got edgy as shit. <laughs> but man, I can, see, I can see his gears turning in his head. Like, should I? Should I not? Should I? And then all the cobwebs came off, and he was like. Without a leg, just in yep. and you were like. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I, I was thinking long and hard, and then I was like, "Yep, I gotta, I have oh, to." <laughs> <sighs> Anyways, but there's no clear transition into that Superman. It just comes right out of nowhere. Like first, he's all he he's fighting the league, and then suddenly he's all happy and chipper, and it's like we. Was it? It's like wasn't his Superman always supposed to be dark and brooding and moody? It, that was Zack Snyder's vision, and it's like, and then and even like Batman, Batman's all quippy now, even though he was totally murdering people left, right, and center in Batman vs Superman. It's like, oh, we all Why? saw the previous movies. Like, we're not that dumb. Nothing makes you happier than killing a bunch of bad guys. <laughs> <sighs> this movie. I hated this It's movie. like every single movie in the DCEU is just continuing to try and one-up how bad they can be. And then Wonder Woman was like, oh, you guys expect something bad? Boom! Gave <laughs> something, you something that's actually pretty good! Good ha! enough! Yes! <laughs> good enough, yeah, passable. <laughs> yeah, it's completely passable. Sure. It's a completely respectable movie. Yeah. 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 It's. I wasn't sad that I went and paid money to go see it. I was actually... I wanted to support it. I, I can't remember if I saw it. Yeah, I did see it in theaters. Yeah. 
I think oh, Ben yeah. Affleck is on his way out. I think he's trying. He's he's Gone slowly girl, trying amazing. to. He was yes. amazing in that. Don't he know. has such chops that he, he needs I to like, get out of his WB contract because I you like, can tell he didn't want to do it. Come, uh, not it comes at night. Um, what's what's the uh, the gangster movie? He um, Live year? by night. Live by night. Oh yeah, it, yeah. That whole movie, it felt like he just didn't want to be doing it. No. And like I like his performance as Batman. Story from Blade Runner. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard that um, outside there was a loud car it sounds like a bomb. but like I Ben Affleck's fine as Batman I just don't like the character he's playing mm-hmm. um, it's not his fault it's, no it's not his fault he's but I think he's slowly trying to get I think he's slowly trying to get out of the DCEU and honestly I support you save yourself um <laughs> Murder on the Orient Express. Great yeah. fun. A lot of fun. Yeah. I wasn't disappointed uh, that I saw it. I just... It wasn't mind-blowing, but it, yeah, was, it, was, a, it was a fun theater-like experience. It keeps your brain working. That honestly has beautiful. some rewatchability to the it. The cinematography was really nice, but yeah. still, I, I will always complain about this. You're shooting in gorgeous 65 and 70 millimeter film, and you're going to confine it within a train for most of the movie. It's... At least she designed cheaper. a train. It's cheaper to, to shoot that than digital a lot of sure. the times, though, so yeah. it, might, it might be a, a, a point. I, I, I don't I, think that it was an artistic direction I, as much as it just was a smart one, you know? Yeah. I didn't get to see it. I wanted to see it, though, because the oh, cast totally is really it. legit. It, but... it's, it's still a, uh, a really good movie. I like the original a lot more. Sure. Um, the story didn't really Daisy change. Ridley was awesome in it, too, <laughs> by the way. Well, it's been a while since we referenced everyone, Star Wars. Everyone was amazing in it. Cool, uh, but it was cool Josh to see Gad Daisy was Ridley. Hilarious, I yeah, I, I gotta say, I did love the Josh Gad and Daisy Ridley um, video thing where he tried to get Daisy Ridley to spoil the Last Jedi. Yeah, they've been doing that a while. It's, it's, it's funny they always. Start really, if you guys don't know, um, just look it up. Just look up Josh Gad, Daisy Ridley. You can Google it even. Yes, um, after you're done listening to this podcast, of course. But <laughs> <laughs> the what four hours we've been talking. Lot roughly, someone's or... got a really long drive to work. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, three it's billboards kind of outside long. Ebbing, Missouri. I didn't see this. I can't wait to see this. Oh my gosh, mm, me it was too. So good. It was so freaking good. It was. <sighs> have you seen In Bruges uh, or Seven Psychopaths? Am... Oh, Seven Psychopaths. I have seen Seven Psychopaths. Is it's tonally he he's consistent. Martin McDonough is cool. consistent with what he wants. Seven Psychopaths is a lot funnier because it's a lot more lighthearted. You know, the idea of a dog being kidnapped leading to all of it. Yeah. Three billboards outside in Ebbing, Missouri. Uh, her daughter was raped and killed. So mm-hmm. it, the stakes are a lot higher. But Frances McDormand kills the part. She's amazing. And Peter Dinklage has a great little cameo and says oh, yeah. one of my favorite lines that's ever been put to, to film. I, I like cheesy things myself. <laughs> No, I gotta see that. You, you don't even need context. It's just he just says it. It doesn't even like. There's no point of him saying it in the movie. He just does, and it's great. That's awesome. I am looking forward to seeing that. Sweet. I saw it twice now, and I cool. I, I would see it again. In theaters. I will definitely check it out for sure. Um, here's another film I needed to check out: uh, Disaster Artist. Yes. Finally. Oh, I, I guess uh-huh. I should. I guess we should do uh, at least a few Tommies. <laughs> Hi, doggy. <laughs> to be or not to be, you are tearing me <laughs> apart. <laughs> Fantastic! I all the I one fed up with this room. world. Yeah. I love the room. I thought I think it's amazingly awful. <laughs> it it was it was so good, and and everybody's uh, portrayal of the of the cast. And crew and stars of 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 the cult classic The Room was incredible. I, I think it's a movie that you can that you can enjoy without even seeing The Room. I was about but you're to crazy say the exact you opposite. I was gonna say if you really want to get the movie, you have to see The Room because the, so it's just a testament to the movie yeah. itself. Of course, you have to see The Room to watch the movie, but I, I don't I don't think 
My um, dad and I went and saw it uh, a, a week ago, and he has not seen the room yet. But I showed him the best of clips of the room. Sure, and he he loved Disaster Artist. He thought uh, Franco was amazing, and yeah. rightly so. He I hit her. Do you want to change the line? You guys are doing great. <laughs> like it takes so much talent to be able to replicate somebody that awful at acting. Because mm-hmm. I, I saw an analogy. He's a genius. If, if you are trying to hit a bullseye and you miss, you can say you hit you, you were trying to hit the bullseye. But if you're trying to replicate a guy that couldn't even hit near the target and you hit exactly where he hit, that takes just as much skill as trying to hit the bullseye. Because mm-hmm. you're still trying or to hit an exact purposely, spot. <laughs> imagine trying to get a zero on a test. Seriously. That's, that's, yeah. That takes skill to be that good at being bad. Yeah. And But at the same time, as though it's, it's such... A, uh, an inspiration to filmmakers everywhere. Yeah. So, totally. like, for someone that's so bad at it, and 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 Hannibal Burst was hilarious. Hannibal Burst was yeah, just awesome. a small part, but he, he pops up and just and so just, many people had just uh, small parts in that. They yeah. had Brian Cranston at the beginning. There was Adam Scott and J.J. Abrams. Yeah, they have uh, Judd Apatow yeah. too. It opens up kind of like HBO's Band of Brothers, where they have a bunch of people okay. uh, sitting in front of a black screen yeah. talking yeah, about yeah. the significance of the event. Tony right. Wiseau was just an inspiration to me because, like that kind of it's thing, it's over like, the top yeah. amazing. And J- hearing J.J. Abrams talk about the room as if it was a great piece of cinema is also hilarious. Yeah, and and like I was with a bunch of uh, fanboys of the room, and and everybody just at the same time collectively was like, oh, like yeah. so many times during the film. Did you stay uh, after the credits to see the? Oh the yeah, I, I knew yes. about that, and Perfect. so a couple of my friends got up, and I'm like, sit down, sit down, sit down. Tommy Wiseau has a part at the end of this, and it was oh, amazing. Because it's it's weird to see them cut between Tommy Wiseau and James Franco's Tommy Wiseau because he it was killed it. And I've seen the room a million times. I, I see it with a bunch of people over the plaza in Atlanta. <laughs> it's just such a fun time, and it, it will be a movie that I'm gonna buy. The side yeah. by side comparison. I actually <laughs> is amazing. My brother actually um, ordered me uh, the room on Blu-ray, and uh, he got Tommy Wiseau to write a personalized message in it. Mm-hmm. I've yet to receive it, but I'm so excited to get it. <laughs> you want to do, um, talk about labor before we get into the final one? Um, sure. I didn't see this. I really super, want to see super it. Super excited about seeing it. I, I just saw it maybe five hours ago and mm-hmm. 824. I, yeah. I couldn't stop smiling when I, when I left because it was, uh, it's got a perfect score, doesn't it? It, it was, it's beautiful. Everything about the movie is just, Fantastic! I wholeheartedly agree with Rotten Tomatoes' score, even though mm-hmm. Rotten Tomatoes can't really be a trusted um, source. I I much. look at it; it just you have to know how to take it. Yeah, you have to know what it means. To but you. I agree with them for the most part, so, which is yeah. There are some films on Rotten Tomatoes that um, are rated really high, but I don't quite like it. Like um, for example, uh, Mission Impossible: Rogue Nation. That's like a ninety-two or something, and that's like I was quite disappointed with that one. Or then there's movies that are like low that I actually really love. Like, um, for example, The um, Boondock Saints is a <laughs> rotten score and it should not be. Yeah, I like um, Bruce movie. Almighty is like a 47, I think. Yeah, I love that movie. I do too. <laughs> yeah, Lady Bird was just, it, it was really, really good. One of the best movies of the year because it captures that mother daughter relationship. It, like, there, it goes from the mother and daughter. Nine on Tomatoes. Uh, some That's dickhead close. gave it a rotten review. <laughs> yeah. That dickhead was me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to see hey, this. Lori Metcalf and uh, where did you see it at? The mall, mall of uh, Georgia. Yeah, they had it. Sweet. Oh yeah, I'm looking at times yeah. right now. Probably, um, I might go see it at the Colonial Light scene. Cool. Uh, Saoirse Ronan was fantastic. Mm. There were moments where her car- Lady Bird and uh, the mom were fighting, and then instantly. They went into a happy-go-lucky thing because they saw something that distracted them. It was very real to a family aspect, and I loved that. Do you see trends with uh, people that write and direct their own movies? I really do, yeah. Um, (laughs) Just because I I would say that Greta Gerwig helped co-direct Frances Ha because Mm -hmm. her and Noah Baumbach are um, an item. Uh, They're partners, and she did write that one. She has these great themes of realistic characters, specifically female characters and how they deal with their problems with their female friends. Like mm-hmm. hearing the the conversation between females in the movie was amazing because 
it didn't it didn't sound like anything else that I had heard because it was a woman that was actually writing it. Yeah. It was mm-hmm. real dialogue. So it, it's it's equatable in a way to uh, 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 the one of the opening scenes of Pulp Fiction where they're talking about what they call burgers. Yeah, um, <laughs> Royale cheese. Yeah, what, what are they what are, what do they call it? Burger King. I didn't go to Burger King. Go to, like, yeah. It's equatable to that. So it's, yeah. it's just so real. And yeah, it's just it's just spot on yeah. rapid fire realness that awesome. doesn't stop and it's it didn't feel like an hour and a half to me. It didn't even. I, I, well, there wasn't there wasn't oh, a period really? in my uh, the whole uh, viewing that I was like, what what time is it? What what yeah. what, what do I need to do? <laughs> you know, it was so so well done. Cool. Are we ready? I think. All right. I this is. is the showdown everyone has been waiting for. Oh snap! We're gonna get copyright strikes for using John Williams. Yes, the ambient <laughs> light is now red. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Why don't? All right. So, as I understand it, me and Connor are on the positive side. You, however, Cole, I'm, I'm are on the mixed, mixed side. Mixed, more leaning towards negative. So, Connor. Why don't we start this positively before Cole crushes our dreams? <laughs> okay. Um, I loved it. I really did. And it's got its flaws. I understand that. But um, uh, as a Star Wars fan, I understand that it's, it, it's okay to, to not like some aspects of something that you love. Um, first viewing, I liked it, didn't love it. Second viewing, I, I, I liked it even more. Um, and I mean, I was closer to love it the second time. So mm-hmm. It's just it made me happy, and it, and it reminded me why I like Star Wars so much. Yeah, there's some goofy parts, I know, <laughs> but overall, I loved it. Your what thoughts? I will say with um, is that I'm somewhat of a, a detached um, fan of Star Wars, and what I mean by that is that yeah, I love Star Wars as a kid. You know, every kid loves Star Wars, but I don't know. Star Wars is always one of those things I sort of um, moved away from because of how popular it was. Um, now, The Force Awakens did, I guess, awaken my fandom. Then there was Rogue One, oh, which... Force then there was Rogue One, which uh, I didn't care for. We are literally the complete opposite on everything. I didn't like Force Awakens. I loved Rogue One. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so This is going to be fun. So what I went into... So with, the, as, um, so with The Last Jedi, I went into it with... Um, Sort of like a healthy detachment from, like I said, a healthy de- detachment from the franchise. And I didn't go into it with any sort of like, oh, I want this to happen or anything like that. I just wanted to see this movie play out. And I loved it. <laughs> that's one of the, that's one of is, the keys is, is not having any expectations. Yeah. Because are we going into spoilers? Can we go Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Spoilers. That, spoilers. Definitely spoilers okay. for Star Wars. Spoilers so in the house. People said... And this is one of the main things I've got ton, tons of tons to say about this. But people go, who are raised parents? Who is no, who fucking cares? It's not important unless the storyteller wants it to be important. Yeah, here's people the- wanted those things answered, but I don't. I, I and I even said my my official stance on it was Snoke. It doesn't matter. He's a new character. Ray, she comes from nothing. Here's the thing. If Ray comes from, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. Go if ahead, Ray go. comes from. Uh, force users, then it closes the the environment of Star Wars, and it makes it seem really small. It's the mm-hmm. it's some of the problems that I have with the with the prequels is it just it takes this universe. It, Star Wars is really the 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 most vast uh, franchise ever. I'm sure. I don't know about mm-hmm. Star Trek to be honest, but Star, Star Trek does not pretty... have nearly as much canon and in, uh, okay, then perfect. Stuff. Yeah, it yeah, takes yeah, a lot. Exactly. A lot it's of it takes on with not, the Enterprise. Not yeah. Near. Um, but and it's so big and and when you have stories sound like that like oh Snoke is this person and Ray comes from uh, Palpatine for like uh, is, which is probably the most likely theory that they had it closes it just it chokes the entire extended universe that you can I mean like have. damn C three PO being built by Anakin I hate that me too why. Why? Why did that have to happen? Why does everything have to be connected? I think it's that's my problem with fan theories in general. Is that they try to like connect everything? It doesn't all have to be connected. No, no. In fact, it just belittles the universe, like you were saying. Uh-huh. And here's my thing with Snoke: is that Snoke was never really a mystery within the context of the films. He's his function is that of a villain. In the movie, in the same way, you can sort of say it's not oh, the same villain with a leash that attaches to the main villain. Sure, it's I like think Kylo Ren is a great villain in this. In this movie. Oh, I love Kylo Ren. Grows, but a like lot. it's like looking at like 
Tarkin, I mean, he functions as just a, a secondary villain in that film. Ben Swolo. Seriously. Oh, okay, those are okay. Is those ripped. are the, those are the, the best memes to have come out from this yeah. movie. Like don't like There's internet. something approaching from hyperspace and it's, it's Ben Swolo. <laughs> Yeah. I, and I didn't, I didn't laugh about it when I first saw it. Yeah, no. I didn't laugh about it when I first saw it, the Ben Swallow thing. But it, it's funny later, but I don't think it ruins the film yeah, at I didn't, all. I, didn't I trusted think anything Ryan of it. Johnson. So. I didn't think anything of it when I first saw it. It was only funny afterwards. And I, was like, yeah, I, I actually yeah. preferred to see him like that because you can see how fucked up his entire body was. From, but you can from also Ray. see that he... It, Ties in with his character wanting mm-hmm. to be the best that he can be. Yeah. So seeing him ripped makes sense. Yeah. He wants to be a physically perfect villain. Mm-hmm. Because Darth Vader was not. The I saw uh, uh, an article that was saying the only other person that has appeared topless in uh, Star Wars was Anakin mm-hmm. in the prequels. Hey, and everybody else has has always so, been clothed. No, 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 no. You are wrong. The Rancor Keeper. Oh God! Oh God! Oh the belly! Oh the belly! Oh. I blocked it out of my memory. I, well, I blocked that because of the 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 music scene in Jabba's hut. Yeah, I completely blocked that out. Okay, and the funny thing is, I have the despecialized editions, which don't show that. Yeah, me too. And uh, it's not that much better. Not that's that that's where you could tell George Lucas's ideas for Star Wars were kind of starting to go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I just want, I just want a space uh, club. I just, I just want it to be a space club. That's yeah. Anyway, back on the but last. But it's, it's, it's Jar Jar. See, it's, it's, it's Jar Jar for the, the kids. It's, it's, it's comedy relief, guys. Jar Jar's the key to all this. We can get him working. Darth right, Jar Jar. So, but start, starting in the beginning, you've got uh, Rose Tico's. Sister? Yeah. And she she makes a sacrifice. Two things okay. uh, about that. Number one, why did we need to follow her like she was going to be the main character and then have her die with no I, explanation? I, I think, and I, and I don't know about this, I wasn't crazy about it, but it, but it entertained me, so I'm no one to like really question it. I, like, it worked. It was it's just fo- me thinking about it afterwards. It's a specific rebel. Yeah. It's, fo- it's following someone's story. It's the same thing that Force Awakens did that I love so much where it... it, it completely humanized an otherwise completely unhuman yeah. uh, person, which was uh, FN2187, uh, before he was Finn, which he yeah. got a different name, he got a different identity, he got a different look on life. He became and a new person. He became a new person. And then at the beginning of this one, we have her, and she's crying, and, and she goes over, and actually, we should go back and talk about... Poe Dameron. His beginning scene was so yes. fucking cool. I and like I've got, that. I've got I mean, complete and utter bias to this, but I don't care. That when he pulls that 180 with that the is so it's like, BB-8, it's like a car it's chase. Funny again, and it's oh, it's just so great. I was I was just disappointed with the rest of Poe's character because he became that guns first, ask questions later. When I thought in the first, he was one, smarter than that. Yeah, in the first one, he he came off as much smarter than that. And a lot of the comedic relief afterwards, I didn't really like. But the whole General I was Hux fine with thing, all of it. I, I that was great. Some yeah. jokes it were was, hit and miss for me, but General Hux is. I feel so bad for him in the Star Wars trilogy because think about it. The first one, he's getting beaten around by Snoke. The mm-hmm. second one, he's being thrown around literally <laughs> by Snoke. Yeah, but he's an idiot. And now he is Kylo Ren. Well, yeah, yeah, but it's is he really though? Because it's not his fault. No. But I mean, still his. It's, his, it's his just fleet is getting idea. bombarded by rebels, which they're very, yeah. very talented rebels. It's just but, the idea that and he gets not a thrown down by a hologram yeah. Snoke, and and um, oh, I, I can't wait to see this movie again. Honestly. And now but, he is Kylo Ren's bitch. That guy is such a good actor. Donald Gleeson Donald is, Gleeson is, is oh my god! Because I watched Ex Machina last week, the week before uh, maybe, and I had no so idea until uh, my buddy Griffin told me. He was like, "That's." Hux, and I was yeah. like, what the fuck? Yeah, he's become one of my favorite actors wow. currently working recently. Like, he, Whenever I see him, it's always a pleasant surprise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, and then, okay, where are we now? So we're on we're on the Rebel fleet. I didn't really think I, Rose was a necessary character. I don't think she was necessary, to, but I loved it. I, I like that, they, that it was a different uh, romance for Finn, because I sure. didn't really want Finn and Rey to get together. Or oh, no, I, Finn I, I, and Poe. Yeah. Poe! Oh my gosh, Finn and Poe is still what I want. Hashtag Storm Pilot. 
Why not? Hashtag out of the closet, guys. Why Come on. Not? Come on. <laughs> my okay. My my whole thing is is, is it, it, there's you have a bunch of Star Wars fans out there that say why do this? Why do that? Well, because these people fucking exist. Yeah, they're and they need to be people. represented in fantasy. Because I mean, think of someone being mad about a homosexual relationship when there's aliens everywhere. Yeah. Okay, so that's on that. That's Fuck that's you. that's your problem. Yeah, that's your problem. Uh, also, that's back, back to the the trailers in 2014. You really have a problem with a black stormtrooper in everything know, else in Star Wars when you know damn well that the stormtroopers used to kidnap babies. Come on, I know, I know. it's ridiculous. Even, really even really I know that, and I'm not a big Star Wars fan. Yeah. I'm I'm not like a a, a big person of, about the mythology but i had a nerd moment where i was like yeah that can that can fucking happen yeah <laughs> uh, i guess well and it's not politics it's just representing people yeah yeah it's not it's got nothing to do with that shit no. it's just got something to do with just being nice to people and representing mm-hmm. uh, abroad and, i mean people have been racist as shit to uh, uh kelly marie tran just for being happy about being in star wars it's fucked up uh, and it's not just two people out there. I mean, it's got it's gotten a backlash that there's a, a main Asian character, which is just ridiculous. Uh, Vietnamese American. Here's the thing. Why is that a like? We need more. Here's Asian the thing. People are complaining film. that it's like, oh, this was only done to appease to the Chinese market. It's like, well, first of all, the Chinese are way more concerned with just the actual films themselves than actually having like their demographic represented. Exactly. Secondly, isn't she Korean? She is Vietnamese. She's Vietnamese. She's, I am that's sorry. sorry. I am. That's sorry. okay. That's okay. She's Vietnamese. She's Vietnamese. That's that. That's awesome. That. Why mm-hmm. can we not have Vietnamese rebels? Yeah. Why not? I was touched by her whole story, but I agree it was. A, yeah. And I, I like her story. Right to I thought it was great, but it was, I loved her character. Wasn't crazy about the whole plot. I think they honestly could have cut. Here's all that the thing. Out. I was pissed. So pissed when that bitch came up and grabbed Finn out of the red thing, and he was gonna like sacrifice his life. Yeah. I was like, "Come on, that's a I great ending." Here's the, here's here's what I will say. With Finn Rose, here's my end. Here's my contribution to this. Is um, I will agree that the cancel bite sequence is definitely the weakest aspect of the film by far. Mm-hmm. Um, in that I still didn't hate it. I don't hate it because but it I, serves a pur- it does serve a purpose. Yeah. It only hate serves one a purpose. thing in Star Wars, which I can get to after. Yeah, sure. We'll that after. Anyways, um, it's not useless though, but it, because it does serve a purpose. I love DJ. DJ was cool. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing. Is that again? <laughs> He's um, Benicio del Toro's character. Ah, oh, yes, Benicio del Toro was the, awesome. Uh, the the code breaker with the stutter. Mm. Yes, he was great. Uh, but I feel like you could have probably. It, it does drag that Kanto bite sequence. It does drag, so maybe you could have probably cut some of it out to just to tighten it up because it does bring yeah, up some Ryan, interesting. If you're listening to this, <laughs> which you surely out. are, by the he, way. He <laughs> apparently cut out thirty minutes. Of yeah, I know already, it already. Which when I first heard that, I was like, "No, don't cut anything." And I, have I, saw the, it, I, like, I have the I have the utmost respect for right. Ryan Johnson, though. I love. He him. made yeah. a story He's that great. he wanted to make. And even if there's aspects, and I like it all because I understand I can I kind of morph my uh, like my expectations maybe mm-hmm. to to what they were going for because I think that's important when you have a storyteller that's as talented as Ryan Johnson. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I respect yeah. him so much for having the balls to make his own Star Wars movie. And I know not I was somebody else's. I, that I was that does make me love surprised it. by the entire movie. There were things that Same. I didn't like about it, but I was happy that we didn't get. I love Force Awakens. I'm not. You didn't, did you? I did not. I thought okay. it was too much of a rehashing of the old. I trilogy. never saw that. See, what here's you... here's the thing with um my two cents on the Force Awakens, real quick. It does use a familiar um plot setting for A New Hope, but the thing with A New Hope is that it's not focused on a story on that story. It's focused on those characters. My main problem isn't even that. I was okay with the the idea of it kind of being A New Hope, but now The Force Awakens. My problem was. J.J. Abrams' 20 seconds of nostalgia every 10 minutes where he would show something from the original There's trilogy. Yeah, there were some bits I didn't John Williams, for. and then nothing happens with it. It's yeah. not near as bad as C-3PO and R2 and one <laughs> That pissed me I, off. I rolled my eyes. And I know a lot of Star Wars fans... I think, I, I like I think it's one worth it being that. in yeah. there. I think it's worth it being in there uh, just for the, the fans that would go, oh, that's cool. But for... I, honestly, the... Like bigger fans or or, fan, or film fans in general, and just kind of rolling your eyes. 
But yeah. it's not made for just us. It's not made for just them. It's made for a lot of people. And uh, if you can't learn to appreciate uh, what Ryan Johnson did, mm-hmm. I think it's There was a us. cameo, or not cameo, I should say, Easter egg um, in Rogue One that I liked where they were looking through the plans for the Death Star and they came across a uh, oh, dark, the the dark hyperspace. Saber. They uh, came across the Dark Saber too. Dark Saber and the hyperspace yeah. mm-hmm. uh, tracking technology that, that they was were working perfect. on. Yeah. Because, uh, was because so the big smart. thing, and for people that are Star Wars fans like myself, in, in, uh, in The Last Jedi, you go, you can't track through hyperspace. Like, Wait, no, like, you, they were developing yeah, it. But they, they were, were developing, developing yeah. it. Which impressive. Uh, very impressive. That's cool. Uh, the one thing I absolutely hated in The Last mm-hmm. Jedi was the force connection between Kylo and oh, Ray. Oh, God. Really? And then the the, um, the 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 idea of Luke being able to be there with a real lightsaber, that was that was kind of the weirdest part for me. I liked really? that he was there, like he was a force projection there. It just didn't make sense to me why his force projection was able to have the lightsaber. Was he splitting himself in two? And that's why he, he used so much force, and that's why he died. If so, that makes sense. I just would have liked a little bit more clarification. It seemed like sure. Ryan was throwing it in there because it made sense to him. And I'm sure it does. And I, I, I'm i not angry that the, uh, the the force connection was in there. I think it was very useful, and it was mm-hmm. he now, made it how, part of the what story. What about the it execution? Just, Do you have a problem with the execution? Of Snoke? No, of, of, no. I mean, the, the actual execution. Of, we'll talk about, about that. I was about to say because we'll I have. About, no, do you do you have a problem with the execution of the force connection? No, it, it was just the idea of it was okay. offsetting the. Okay. I liked it because personally. the way they did it, I I loved. It was simple and effective, and especially when um. Can you see my surroundings? I can't see yours. <laughs> yeah, like he 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 offered a little bit of uh, it, like. Uh, on siding on the audience and then side. when um, Ray had the water or whatever and Kylo comes back and he has it on his hand I thought that was really cool too mm-hmm. like there were there were cool moments in it it was just more of a why you know mm-hmm. it's just that the force is that much bigger to steal a line from our camel I want why why is Yoda back oh no I love really? that yeah. that's actually one of my favorite moments of the film actually I, I think I would like it if it wasn't spoiled for me by a Freaking oh, commercial. A really? commercial spoiled it and showed Yoda, then Luke, then Rey, and then said, The Last Jedi. Really? Yeah. I was. I, I don't even know what it was for, but I was okay, pissed. Here's the thing. I only watched the Spring first Dawes, trailer. Sir. Yeah. He uh, puppeteered it. Good job. But like, here's the thing. He's on the Frank red Dawes. carpet, and that's where I was confused. I was like, why the hell is Frank? Because, uh, of course, Peter Mayhew, Anthony Daniels, John Williams, everybody, you know... Uh, uh, Gary Fisher, the dog. Oh, that was so sad. They were all there, and 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 I was, and I saw Frank Oz, and I was, I mean, I didn't really think much of it about the uh, at the time, but as soon as I saw Yoda in there, I was like, that's why Frank Oz was on the red carpet. <laughs> yeah. well, I just oh, figured cool. he was there because he was part of Star Wars. Yeah, so but like, like, I think that I didn't see anyone else there that was just part of the original mm-hmm. trilogy, though. Well, I mean, there was George Lucas. He was there. Oh, at the premiere? Oh, no, no, no. Never mind. I was thinking, no, of, the Force the I was thinking of the Force Awakens premiere. He no, was there the last Jedi premiere. Yeah. Okay, you're right. Never mind. <laughs> is George Lucas even invited to premieres anymore? I, no, <laughs> I don't not. think he is because he's kind of a dick. Yeah. Uh, he's I've, kind of a dick. I've, I've, I've heard the way he treated his wife on set. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Da- yeah. David David Prowse and him and don't get along very no, they well. Don't. So it's, it, there's things, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People, because it's not, George Lucas isn't Star Wars. Uh, not like a lot of other movies are their directors and writers. Star Wars is ILM. Star Wars is George Lucas's storytelling. Star Wars is this amazing cast they brought together that ended up being great actors because of Star Wars. That's that's what Star Wars is. Yeah, mm-hmm. he did. A, he, I, I always will respect him for being able to create something from literally nothing with no nobody had faith in him for someone that's building a Star Wars unit I, uh, or the astromech unit R2 is I don't understand how someone did this from scratch it's hard enough doing yeah. it with a 3D printer and custom made styrene parts and frames and everything like that CNC machines I don't understand how this was brought on by uh, I mean it's just crazy 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 talented people mm-hmm. crazy talent and that's the world building and the world building in The Force Awakens was awesome uh, all right, what aspect should we talk about next? All right, Snoke. I would. Well, okay. We have to talk about. All right, Snoke. sure. Oh my god, 
I, I, I'm not on the side that wants more background for Snoke. I, I think he's he was good as he was, but to have somebody that they built up to be so powerful killed by a stupid trick like that and split in Here's two, the... it really frustrated me. Kill him off in a battle or something. I get where you're coming from. Where, where did but... they say that he was that powerful? Though? It wasn't that they said it. It was that it was implied. He was using force through a hologram. He was he was able to be like uh, Luke, where he well, saw the I force think, around. I, may, you might not be giving Kylo Ren enough credit. No, I think he's a lot more powerful. That's why I'm okay with Snoke's okay, okay, death. Okay. Mm. I just didn't want him to die that bullshit way. Yeah. I thought a saber. Well, that died bullshit way. I was clapping. I that was yeah. a cool yeah. moment. I was yeah. I was shocked. He, did, he and they described did a very good his job. own death. <laughs> I mean, that's directing right there. I would yeah. say Snoke was never... If I had any problems with The Force Awakens, it was Snoke was not really that interesting of a character in that film. And I sort of had the same thing with I this. I didn't think he was time. interesting. I just thought he was playing the role of the Emperor, which yeah, he was. and that's my I, point. And that's why I was so confused why everybody wanted a background on him, because yeah. I was like, it doesn't matter. Cause, yeah, Cause exactly. People, cause he's, people see the Star Wars tattoo, and they go, they go, who's Snoke? Who's Rey? And I'm like... I don't know. It's the movie like, hasn't come out. The thing with Snow, like I said earlier, is that he's just his whole purpose of the film is that he's just a villain. It's sort of like how you can say how Tarkin is just a villain in a new hope. But it you don't need a background on him. Leapfrogs, uh, uh, Snoke, uh, Kylo Ren does, mm-hmm. uh, and 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 because people go, oh, Kylo Ren's a bitch, and then you see him in this movie. Hell, he's anything but. Yeah, that he that, is the life of the battle with uh, Ray and Kylo working together against and the Adam Andrew Driver. Roberts. And I don't know who choreographed this, but the way that he uses his lightsaber, it's so he unique. Throws, it is. Throw, and, he, and, he, and he slams and he, he stabs, and it's rage. very interesting. Mm. And it it because people like the prequels because there's a lot of lightsaber battles and stuff like that. And then the original trilogy, people understand that it's not about that; it's about the emotional weight of it. I but there's more such a battles, perfect yes, balance it was between that. So good. All right, let's talk about um, uh, uh, Ray and um, Luke's sure. dynamic. I, I that's, really I love that's, that. That's, 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 I think that's one of the biggest parts of the movie. I thought the reveal because of Luke, Luke is a is a is a uh, okay for the beginning of the movie. The, no, the, the the reveal of Luke as a um, as a, the the teacher that had that moment where he broke and like had his lightsaber and then regretted it mm-hmm. I thought that was great I yes. thought that was a great aspect and seeing Luke telling it to Ray, I could really feel the emotion I thought Mark Campbell did a great job but his, his, his first presence Ray gives him the lightsaber and it's emotional and everybody's con- everybody's just waiting in, in anticipation and he throws it behind his I, yeah, I expected and that I went, because of what I heard but I, I loved it because it was <laughs> It showed that Luke is done. He's tired. Everything he's with, tired of the yes. religion. He's grown and he's a different character. So that's one of the main. Uh, that's one of the main criticisms of the movie. Is that's not how Luke would act. Let's be. Let's go back. I saw. I saw this as a meme, but let's. It's real. Sure. What did Yoda do after the Emperor came under his nose? He went into exile. Same with mm-hmm, mm-hmm. freaking Obi Wan Kenobi. That is a Jedi tradition. <laughs> It's a Jedi tradition. when you but, have a problem. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, but it's also... And no one is going to come out like, oh, this is just a rehash of Yoda's, uh, you know, uh, role. Because it's not true. He yeah. plays a different role, but he plays a similar role. Same with Obi-Wan. They just have similar arcs. And yeah. You can tell that it's more of a... Yoda being the teacher, I think, in all relating back and to the Jedi that goofy. we know. He yes. was. He wasn't. The, yes. He wasn't like a. Uh, he wasn't. He was like a bit serious a one. Hamster on, one. on crack. I gotta movie. say, I love that Yoda in this movie uh, is the goofy Yoda. Yes. Because as soon I as he blow, like as soon as he blows up the the tree, he's like laughing. He's like, <laughs> like yeah. he yeah. kicks his legs. First back. off, <laughs> how how does Yoda have this power? Is he like the Force God? Yeah, that's yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love that. Probably because the only reason Yoda was a, was able to die is because of. Of the upbringing of Luke, that's the only mm-hmm. reason that Yoda was even able to go, because he didn't fade out. He did die, mm-hmm. but he's old as fuck. <laughs> Nine hundred plus years old. Yeah. Right? So it, the only reason that, that that for the story, I mean, it was okay for him to die is because Luke has taken his place. Luke is a crazy powerful legend. And now Ray. And now and now Ray is and mm-hmm. and Ray is. Uh, arc in the movie, I guess you can call it, where she goes and she picks up the rocks and and she's able to <laughs> rescue all of her friends was amazing too. 
Um, but let's see. We're, I'm trying to go and send somewhat of a sequential order. And I will say with Mark Hamill, this is by far his best performance as Luke Skywalker to date. Every word in that sentence mm-hmm. that you just said is correct, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would agree. Yeah, yeah I did love uh, Mark awesome. Hamill in this. I thought the ending battle was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Even, even though yeah. I, I still question like how it happened, I I loved the force it's not about... is something that that's that's been in the in the lore. Uh, so you talk, and I don't know anything about that. I don't sure. keep up with it. I'm, I'm a canon guy, but um, but yeah, Ryan Johnson did his research, and it's very evident from the Star Wars movie that he's not only a fan of Star Wars, he's a, he's a fan of the uh, of the progressive nature of Star Wars. That things change, mm-hmm. that things happen. So this, I mean. I, I, this is a really good trilogy. I think I think we're off to a good start, even though there's only one movie left in the trilogy. I, I kind of feel gutted really, really that good... JJ is going to come yeah. back. No, I'm happy about it. I think he can I, wrap it up really see, well. He's not going to do a rehash, that they were and he's a good us, director. One of the things they were telling us is it's going to be a different director for each movie at the beginning when they were first announcing the new trilogy. And I was like, okay, that's cool. We're going to have three different visions for Star Wars. If we're going back to JJ Abrams, I. Ryan I, Johnson will have a hand in the next one. Ryan See, here's Johnson's the, doing his own trilogy. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. He is. He's writing, writing in. We have no idea what's going to happen in that trilogy, though. Uh, young Rebels. I don't know. I'm excited for them. Uh, whatever it is, as long as it's not within the actual like episodic things, mm-hmm. I think that I, I, will, I will enjoy them because yeah, Ryan Johnson's I, a fantastic director. I, I'm pretty sure. And honestly, I, I wouldn't be opposed in in another twenty years having another trilogy. And like. Well, we'll see, but like, there's see, there's pros and cons to JJ coming back. On the one end, we know for sure we're gonna get an entertaining Star Wars film. Yeah. On the other hand, it could be played very safe. <laughs> and it there wasn't that played, many. Oh, there was a lot. There was a sufficient yeah. amount of lens. In the Force Awakens, yes. When, when he's holding the bolt. Oh, and see, remember the the feeling that you had in Force Awakens when though, you first saw that. that bolt the, being where, held. You saw that bolt being held, that and you're like, cool. "Holy shit!" From that moment, I knew I was gonna like Kylo. Yeah. I, I've always liked the villains of Star Wars more. I think the stormtroopers are awesome. Speaking of villains in Star Wars, what the fuck was up with Captain Phasma? Again, I didn't. Again, we're cheated of an awesome Boba Fett like character. It happened in the original trilogy. It happened in Force Awakens, and then she just freaking dies in well, the Last for, Jedi. For the for the supposedly sake, for the sake of just badass Star Wars lines that are perfectly cheesy and amazing, Rebel scum. I'm down. I'm down. She did it. Yeah, I'm down with it. Yeah. The one liners and she and her, were and her new great. her armor was all shiny and stuff. I I, I I I I don't know. I really liked her, and she got a couple more lines. We got I, to see Gwendolyn Christie's face. In I too. think I really just wanted to see more of Gwendolyn Christie because I love Brienne of Tarth in yeah, uh, Game sure. of Thrones. She's so great. Carrie Fisher's one liners were awesome. Mm-hmm. Like when they when Luke and her meet again, and she's like, "I changed my hair." Apparently, that was ad lib by Carrie Fisher. Carrie Fisher is the fucking. Joke. She is Princess Leia. Mm-hmm. She, she is, is Princess the Leia. greatest of her her type of actress. The sarcastic but still heartfelt. I love it. It's mm-hmm. she, oh, because in the original trilogy, she balanced "Don't fuck with me, badass" and like "sexy" like perfectly. Yes. So like everybody, she was a heartthrob in in the sense of just that like that's everybody's like first crush. But at the same time, she's powerful and she's and you need to and you look up to her. And whether you're a boy or a girl, you kind of look up to Princess Leia. It's, exactly. it's hard not to, you know. Yeah. Um, and she's she's just a wonderful, powerful, mm-hmm. feminine, amazing character. And it is and sad. R. I. P. Carrie Fisher. Yes. It is sad that this is her final film. I would have loved to see what they would have done with her in episode nine. I but think so, what they need they're to still do for do episode nine right. is have her die in the title crawl and then pick up with her funeral. That's yeah, they'll do like a the best way to bet, respect her without trying yeah, to. Yeah, I guess the, you have to do like a or keeping beat. her alive like uh, like Fast and Furious. Nah, and stuff. I I don't I know I they mean, wouldn't make be, sense for her. In, in that that trilogy, because she's the general, she wouldn't do a, a, a Luke and no. run off and hide. She You'll, would yeah, have no. to die. You're just left with like a Star Trek Beyond, have the character die so, between films. I'm assuming both of you thought that she had died when she got sucked out of the thing. I, I thought that was it for her, and then, I, I was like, "That's it." I did. I, I was also I knew that like, they finished all of her filming, and she was there for a while. So I knew that there was going to be some way that she came back. Sure, I yeah. just didn't know to what aspect. Like, because my initial thought was like, "Is this how she goes?" But I was honestly fine with it. It was just a bit jarring. 
Um, I was her, fine with her, her use of the like Force that. was awesome because mm-hmm. it shows that she still has Force use, but she's not really a Force wielder. She's, and yeah. I gotta say this to the It was people. goofy, but I don't care. Yeah, It, it was, was it was goofy. Here's yeah. the it thing, to no people complaining it. about it, if you could use the Force to sustain yourself as a Force ghost, surely you can survive in space a little bit yeah, longer. Seriously. Or like, if you could pull objects towards you, shouldn't you be able to pull yourself towards objects? Especially it makes space. sense! Yeah. The only if there's sound in space, about that that was sad was Admiral Akbar. Oh, oh man, yeah. he's gone. In our hearts. In our hearts. <sighs> Anyways, um, what else should we talk about with the Last Jedi? Uh, I will Holda, agree with you. Holda's um, uh, sacrifice was pretty badass. Where the whole thing went quiet. You see, here's one of my like, yeah. This is one of my awesome. here's one of my criticisms with the no, film. No. I, have, I have a few criticisms, one of which being the Canto Bite sequence and that it's too long. The other being the, her whole subplot. It felt like there was too many twists going on during that section for the sake of it. Like it's mm-hmm. her plan is, is vague, and I don't get why she wouldn't Who's? tell. Um, well, Holdos. Okay. It's it's too vague. We don't. I don't get why she wouldn't tell everyone else what the plan is. I I don't know, and I feel like that's something that I'm going to be able to figure out on third watching. Sure. How many times you've seen it? I've seen it twice. Okay. I feel like that might be something that we can figure out. Maybe not, but mm-hmm. possibly. It seems like a thing that yeah. we'll be able to figure out. I've seen it only the one time, and I thought um, her character was very. Oh, nervous. you should definitely see it a second. Well, I time. want to see it a second time because I actually I liked it maybe twice as my, much. My roommate uh, saw it a second time, and he thought it was a lot better. And we both had it, mixed thoughts. This will time. grow on people. I, I think it will grow like the Empire. It was... Uh, it was mixed Empire at the time. Yeah. People went, stop adding stuff to the Force. So we're in a similar position. There's just no internet. Yeah, exactly. Uh, back then, you know, there's just no internet. Um, and I gotta say, like, there's some really striking shots in this film. Oh, it's, it's cinematically, it's the best Star Wars ever made. Mm-hmm. I mean... Wow! Like, there's, there's so just, many shots uh, that could be used as like a like a screensaver. Was, yeah, that's yeah. what I said. When I was walking out, there was this couple next to me, and and I and and I was holding. I had like all the Star Wars merchandise from like a, just like the like the like the branded uh, popcorn buckets and like the cup and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, they were like, "You see, Force, uh, or, uh, Last Jedi?" And I was like, "Yeah, do you, you like it?" And they were like, "No, I fucking hated it." And I was like. Well, I mean, there's going to be a lot of screensavers, anyways. <laughs> that was my point. But no, there's a lot of people that fucking hated it, man. I think that's ridiculous. I, I, I think it's fine if you don't like it, but I think it's another thing to call it a bad movie. It's definitely not a bad movie. Mm-hmm. I I know that for a fact. I just, mm-hmm. I think I still have that first time dislike mm-hmm. in my... Because my expectations were through the roof. I love sure. Looper. Brick is fantastic. Mm-hmm. I think Ryan Johnson is... Oh, phenomenal director. He Which did like also, three of the also, best episodes of Breaking Bad. Yes, yeah, yes. With with the mo- with the most substance. So that's the thing. Like, if you understand that, like, you didn't, you weren't crazy about the movie, you might also understand that it might grow on you. Yeah, I, I think I, I definitely think it's gonna grow on me. I need to rewatch it. I think all of these things, maybe the Force connection will, will uh, I'll like a little bit more. Or yes, I think you will. Take it I from think, me. It yeah. definitely improved on me a second time. Like, I mean, granted. I actually ended up hating um, the Rose sacrifice thing even more, <laughs> seeing it the second time, just because I really liked Finn in that movie. I thought he, he had a You thought that he was going to have a good send-off? I, but I think, in a way, it, get, it lets us keep Finn and be able to thank him for the sacrifice that he almost made. I don't think that it would have had any... And it still gives us on a the chance for Finn and Poe. Finn Poe. Mm-hmm. Hashtag Storm Pilot. Why not? That's a, that's a good looking Actually, couple, though. Finn, spelled with P-H-I-N-N. That way oh, you get the, the H, the, the, the P of a... Uh, I ship oh. that. I mm-hmm. ship it. Mm-hmm. What about um, Ray and Poe? Do you ship that as well? They hinted at oh, it. Oh, that'd be a great looking I like, too. I like the idea of Ray being like Luke and not really having a relationship. Sure. I well, especially that's, because... That's especially because Obi-Wan and How Yoda. disgusting some Star Wars fans are. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. How I about... Saw, how about we just treat her as a fucking person? Seriously. Yes. I saw one thing that did disgust this. me that was, it wasn't really like objectifying or, or inappropriate. It was just she's disgusting beautiful and everyone understands that, but she's also, she, there in no way, shape or form is it is it advertised as her no. trying to be like this. No. Leia was even more, but still not. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I saw a cartoon that was Ray and Kylo Ren married and having a kid. 
And Ugh. I was just like, no, 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 Why? no, 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 Why? no, stop, stop. Mm. We don't need this. You're ashamed. You're just, <laughs> stop. People are weird, man. They are indeed. Uh, okay, let's let's go to uh, the confrontation with uh, Snoke, where Ray is in a position we don't think that she can get out of, and Kylo ends up turning in Ray's best interest and expects her, and then he's let down another time. I still, I, I thought that was pretty awesome. Yes. I was expecting Kylo to go to the light, and I was like, "Fuck no, please don't." And then he was like, "He is a me. true. He's not only true just Sith. a villain or a true Sith." He's just a bad person. I love that. I he's a bad he's person that still has person. remorse. And because if if you're like like serial killers, like they're bad people, but also they can't control themselves. Kylo Ren has every ability to control himself, but he does the wrong thing, and that's what makes him the worst kind of person. It's yes. awesome to see that all of this was caused by <laughs> Luke Skywalker. Mm-hmm. I know, and that and that how shows you how broken he, he is. Yeah, seriously, oh, and. And people saying that he changed. I get really excited talking about, about making good points. People saying that Luke changed. They literally show you why they, he changed. They give you a good freaking reason why he changes. They give, yeah, they give you so three sense. different points of view. One true, one fake, and one fake on the other side. About why he changed. And it shows you, okay, why would he still be the, the giddy boy from Tatooine after that happened? I was going to go to Tosh State to pick up some power converters. Yeah. Yeah. Why would he still be shooting Womp Rats? The <laughs> ending of Last Jedi kind of ticked me off. Oh, yeah? With the kid? Yeah. It leaves what? it open. It leaves it I open. love that shot, actually. It leaves it yeah. open. It's, Where he's it's, looking at nice. it, it, it just, it brings I just didn't some want... sort of wonder to it, and I love it. I don't think that it was a cliffhanger. Um, it, I just didn't like that I, it was honestly, connected. You know, they it, it could have it could have ended on we have everything we need for a rebellion. It could have ended yeah, on that no, where the porgs are jumping. Oh, let's talk about porgs. <laughs> I on, love porgs. I'm on the side that is. I love porgs. Burn them and eat them. I love them. I love <laughs> they, them. They they popped like up Ewoks every now either. and then. Uh, well, I don't like Ewoks either, but I but I love the porgs and the story about the porgs feels so Star Wars that there were all these. What were they? I don't know. Uh, they were like puffins bird. or something. Yeah. They were a native bird to the island they were shooting on. And they couldn't paint them all out. It cost too much money, so they just overlaid porks. That's so Star Wars. Because there's there's that is unlimited awesome. uh, opportunities for these new Star Wars movies. But the, the fact that they still have to troubleshoot yeah. birds and shots mm-hmm. just feels like Star Wars to me. I agree with that, actually. You know what and I mean? They- they do get annoying at times. Like there were t- there were moments on the island where I wish they would just shut up. When like there's like I don't think they were ever in it too much because I, and I think I think if you think they were in it too much, like find a number mm. of how many times. I don't think it was that much. It's sure. a long movie, so I think they're gonna show up a lot. But yeah. at the same time, Star Wars is also for kids. So if True. a bunch of kids can look at it and go, I like those things. Yeah, but they don't overstay their welcome. So that's the main yeah. thing. It's fine. It's fine with me. But I understand. Pe- I don't. I don't. There's not a whole lot that I have to say negatively about the for, uh, about the last Jedi. Goddamn, <laughs> uh, about the last Jedi. But I listen to everybody. But a lot of a lot of the criticisms that I start to hear are just broken record. Didn't like it. It sucked. It is. And I'm not, like, you gotta give yeah. me a reason. I, See, I, if I you're gonna complain about that. it yeah. on the internet, give me a fucking I, reason. I always back up whenever I say I don't like a film because it's so annoying to hear somebody say I don't like it. Why? I just don't like it. It just sucked. It's, the, it's not you're, you're, you're giving them too much me, credit by saying that they yourself. don't like it. Yeah, it's usually it's bad mm-hmm. or it sucked. Yeah, it's or it was a, people that were it was a it was a hating it heaping pile of dog shit. And I'm like, um, reasons? Why are you such an asshole? <laughs> like, get, like, give me reasons if you're gonna like, complain about it. And I don't care that if you don't like it, you don't have reasons. Don't complain about it on the internet. I've never seen so many adults run to the internet and bitch about something. Here's the thing with this movie: it is about a movie. It I'm is. Sure it is not Just the best movie. movie ever made. It is not the best Star Wars movie ever made. I don't made. think any Empire. Star Wars movie should be classified as one of the best movies ever made, just because mm-hmm. there there there's such a vast library sure. of art. That, well, but I think that, sure. But I, I think, think, I think it's the, the greatest Star American Wars, cinema. Star Wars is one of the greatest movies ever made. For because of what it did for movies, not the movie itself. But yeah. I'm also not singling out a single Star Wars movie. 
Star Wars. Yeah. It's, it's one of the greatest movies ever made. Sure. It's done so much yes. for cinema. Yeah. And yeah. the prequels yeah. have done so much for cinema yeah. as well. I mean, with despite, CGI. Like, think about it this way. Like, See, it, say it, what you will about Jar Jar. Push the first Domino because, in CGI. Because with Jar Jar, it led to motion capture. It would lead it's to true. Gollum. Yeah. It would lead to, like, the Planet of the Apes. And that's what makes it so important. Even though it's yeah. not a good movie, what it did. Is is better than the sum of its parts. Yeah, for like, lack of a yeah. That being said, the Last Jedi analogy. definitely gets an unfair flack. It does because it, it is not a bad movie. It's not perfect. But I think it's not a bad too movie. many people had such high. Expectations I just feel bad for it, Ryan Johnson. Different. I yeah. hope he doesn't. I hope he doesn't feel like a letdown. Oh, I've, I've read I, the interview that he gave, and he he doesn't give a shit. Awesome, <laughs> because he's, he made the Star Wars like, movie okay. he wanted to make. I, I understand yeah. what you guys are saying, but in the end, I made a movie that I'm proud of, and we're all proud. Okay, of Okay, that's so. awesome. That's awesome. He's, he's a great guy. He is truly. Oh, I talked to him on Twitter one time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He shoots film. He always has his uh, his Leica on him. I think he has an M3, M4, something like that. Mm-hmm. And he shoots and develops film. And we actually use the same film stock. So I, I ended up talking to him on on Twitter a while ago. Much before I, I, the trailer even came out, but he—he's a really sweet guy. I actually got to have a bit of a conversation. That's with him cool. On yeah, I, that meant that meant a lot to me. For someone that loved Star Wars this much and was looking forward to what he had to put out, for him to actually interact with someone was mm-hmm. pretty amazing. What a guy! What a guy! <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Spelled weird. <laughs> <laughs> have you got anything else to say about um, the Last Jedi? I can't wait. For I, I don't think I can really say anything else without really giving it that second viewing. So I sure. need to give it a second viewing. Definitely. Are you, are you excited about the Han Solo movie? No. I I agree with you, Alex. You have two, three fucking years to come up with a title and you choose Solo? Really? Yeah. That's really? It? Just that makes me go, okay, so that's the lazy approach you guys are taking. Yeah, but All isn't right. it like Solo, a smuggler story or something like that? No, it's just a Star, Star Wars, Wars story. story. Oh. It's that would have been better. Red Cup. That, that's what that's the working title was Red Cup. Yeah, because Solo Cups it's called Red Cup. I I would have preferred Red Cup. Yeah, but I mean I okay I am excited, but I'm not so looking forward to it. The only if thing that, that I think sense. I love is the casting for Han Solo and Lando. Oh, I, those were Alden really, Ehrenreich is, is awesome. He's great. And yeah. Childish Gambino. Yeah, uh, yeah, Donald Glover. Yeah. <laughs> He's he's awesome. I love the show Atlanta. I love his albums. You know the first he episode where they're in, where they're in the uh, they're in the parking lot right there yeah. in front of the yeah the so that you can see a car that's got his wheels tilted like right that. That's my friend Black. Oh cool, that's yeah. awesome. So him and a couple other my car friends uh, responded to uh, like they were like looking for Atlanta cars. So a bunch of like my car friends got to be in uh, the first episode of Atlanta. Oh, that's cool. cool. So glad. And it's cool renewed. too because I mean I I, know, I kind of know I've got a lot of. Mutuals, especially that that work on a bunch of stuff over here, before people that are involved in the car scene, so had been in the first episode of Atlanta is really funny, yeah. But mm-hmm. Last Jedi, great, but not perfect. Overall, mm-hmm. I was I was happy with it. I think I gave it a six out of ten in regards six to, out of ten almost to the rest yeah. of the Star yeah. Wars movies. Totally. I have Phantom Menace at a three, and I have um, Return of the Jedi at a four. I'm not a big Return of the Jedi fan. Me neither. Okay. And I, I, this is the one that pisses a lot of people off. Revenge of the Sith is at a uh, seven. Um, why? I like the darker route that they took. I, there's sure. a lot of. I just room, think it's there's a lot of room for improvement. Yeah, I, I'm okay. with Connor on this yeah. one, but because I, I don't, I, it's not that I mind the story they're telling. I don't like how they tell it. For me, it was all comparative, like within the Star Wars. I okay. think it is bad storytelling. I still comparatively watch it to one and two. Yeah. That's it. Sure. I, That's two, two is my favorite story, but three is my favorite. Three two was more. such a great story, and I loved it as a kid, but growing up now, I, I see it's mm-hmm. it's it's very hard to rewatch because there are a lot of things that sand. I was like, oh. I don't, I don't like, like sand. sand. It's rough. Irritating. It's Hayden everywhere. Christensen was the worst casting choice for it. Agreed. Again. Yeah. I feel bad for him, though. <laughs> Just like Jake Lloyd. I love that he's gotten some love Got recently, hated. actually. It's interesting. You guys noticed that, like when he went to Star Wars Celebration, everyone's like, "Hayden's back! He's here!" They really he doesn't want to go to that. <laughs> I don't I, think he does. I, he I went to Star Wars Celebration. I know, but I don't think that's. I think that's he like knows a contractually what obligated thing. Sure, like, he gets paid. I mean, you know, that's I, true. They do get paid. It's to go just there. he gets paid a lot too. Um, I mean, what else is he doing lately? Jumper. 
two. <laughs> uh, God, Jen I Arso, hope not. <laughs> what's her name? Who want to play Jen Arso? Uh, Felicity Jones. Felicity Jones. Yeah, she uh, she um ended up charging a bunch for uh, um a meet and greet, and oh, she got okay. a bunch of shit for it. But she doesn't even she doesn't have any control over that. No, I thought. Felicity Jones was all right in Rogue One, but she was I didn't the really worst care casting for her. part for me. Oh, Alan I Tudyk was, was amazing. Yeah, as a K K. I I didn't, I didn't have any casting problems with that movie. Um, even what's his name from Hannibal? Uh, Matt Mickelson. Yeah, I love oh, Matt Mickelson so mm. much. Yeah, I, I just too. didn't know how he was gonna fit in it. He fit perfect. I, I was glad that it was a. So I waited. Planning my my great achievement. Yeah. A whole. My personal favorite <laughs> casting choice in that movie, and this is not even the best one, but for me, it's Forrest Whitaker's Saul Guerrero. I hate that character. My favorite is Here's the thing. I love Forrest Whitaker, Here's but I thing. hated the character. Here's the thing. Here's the, I'm a huge Saul Guerrero fan only because he's the dumbest character in Star Wars. I love him for that. That's Here's fair. the thing. Here's the thing with Forrest Whitaker and his performance. I'm such a huge fan of it. It's even my... It's my wallpaper on my phone for crying out loud yes <laughs> the wonky eye he, I love it <laughs> he is daddy to me and <laughs> like it's one of those performances where it's either like the worst performance I've ever seen or one of the best and it's because he went for it yeah can't can't take that away from him <laughs> um Lies, I, I love Krennic Krennic was scary as shit Ben we stand amidst my achievement. Ben Mendelsohn is. I just kept thinking of him in Dark Knight Rises. What <laughs> the hell is going on? <laughs> I mean, anyways, that's it for Last Jedi. Um, so thank you everyone for listening to this really long podcast. Um, last we'll be I back guess. to discuss next year's movies for sure. So I look like forward to that. Purpose. Yes, a cat's yes. purpose. We need a cat's purpose in our life. Indeed. Beep boop, uh, R2 story. <laughs> That's a more creative title than Solo. <laughs> or like a Job of the Hut movie about weight loss. I don't know. That would be hilarious. Yes. Uh, so thank you guys once again for um, joining me in this podcast. Um, and we'll see you all next time. Take care, everyone.